So instead of watching the good old hockey game last night, well, you did watch one of them, right? Yeah, you. Sorry, I'm a little sick. Obviously, um, instead of watching uh, uh, the good old hockey game last night, Steve actually had time to watch a movie. And what you're about to hear before we get into who wore the crown is Steve's movie review, a short one, we think, on the Joker. <laughs> well, because because literally it was like he said, "I saw the Joker," and then I said, "Oh, how was it?" And then Steve said, "Well, movies today are different." They're just different. And then and then Jesse started laughing. And we both said, and you just said, no, please save this for the show so you can publicly announce what you thought of the Joker. Panago Pizza presents S D P P the Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! He's got like brain trauma. And and childhood trauma and all these terrible things and it's the story of how it it basically convinces you okay here's how a regular human being goes could, to be insane yes or, mm-hmm. well and could become someone like this right yeah. whereas the first Batman movie that came out I believe during our lifetime was oh some guy he fell in a toxic vat of goop. And that made him crazy. Is that and, how that is that how the original? Yeah, when Jack Nicholson, <laughs> oh, he Jack like Nicholson, falls yeah. in a vat of something, and that makes him. He's already kind of nuts, though. He's already like a yeah. criminal or something. Yeah, isn't but he? then he goes crazy. But that's a different story. It's like if you're telling Spider Man today, you still tell the story of a kid getting bit by a spider and his parents dying and all that stuff. No, but the Joker is a different movie. It can't, it can't be. He got bit by a spider. <laughs> it's everyone's gotta. Every movie now is here's how this could really actually happen. Mm. Whereas back then it was, a, and then a spider bit him, and he fell in a toxic thing of, oh, and then he's the spider joker. And, like, I, I feel like a Spider-Man reboot, like, you you couldn't have Venom, because, ah, oh, Venom, that's too ridiculous. Well, you can't have Venom. Venom. Yeah. They just haven't done the crossover yet. No, I know, but, like, the new, but new one, ah, oh, it's impossible. The can't biggest do it. grossing movie of all time is The Avengers. Like... I don't you can, think, I think your you argument can. holds up. And, it, and it's, but it's like the end of it, though. Right? Like, are they going to keep doing that? They're going to, they're doing some more movies. like Yeah, they've got movies. new Avengers coming. Yeah. I don't know. It's just don't, like, here's how someone could actually be Captain America. I feel like they would reshoot Captain America, and like during the experiment, he just dies, and that's the end of the movie. <laughs> no, I'll be like, right? guys, keep that needle away from me. Steroids are bad. I'm going to go to the gym. Yeah, that's actually, that's say. bad. Yeah. In 1940. Yeah. And then he'll eat a plant-based burger. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Damn, that's, right. that's good. No, and it just it just records <laughs> his five years. And there'll be outside saying, there are 40 different chemicals in that, sir. Please. <laughs> you shouldn't need that. Back off. No, this th- movie is problematic. <laughs> C- Captain America, like the new one, would just record his five years being shamed for being a man on the home front. <laughs> People throwing white feathers at him. Oh, that's, that's, not, that's, uh. And that then was, he's just very sad. That's First World War. Oh, you, whatever. Captain America, Second World War. Oh, fair it, enough. Yeah, yeah, the First World War, they used to hire young women to walk around the streets in England. Uh-huh. And if they found a young man, you know, in their in their 20s, they'd go up and they'd surround him. And if they found out he hadn't enlisted, they would throw, like, white feathers on him and make a spectacle of it, embarrass him oh, yeah, wow. into going to a recruiting station. Yeah, to basically say... Uh, the white feather was a... Because you're a coward? A, it was a, yeah, it was a sign of cowardice. And that, that dates back, I think, two or three hundred years before that, too. If wow. someone gave you yeah. a white feather... It so was, it's got to be realistic. Yeah. It can't be, oh, <clears throat> now he's jacked. And there's, he also lives for a hundred years. There's and... a really long movie involving Kate Hudson and Heath Ledger from back in the day where Heath Ledger Ooh, doesn't go to war in, like... The Middle East, it, like British colonial times, yeah. and his friends all give him a white feather, and his girlfriend or his fiance gives him a white feather, and then it's called the Four Feathers, and he has to give the feathers back and be brave, and it's what? just obnoxiously long and no point. <laughs> like, it's Great, just, yeah, yeah. So sounds anyway. good. So what's your review of the Joker? Yeah, I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was a good movie. I could definitely see why it would mm-hmm. make people uncomfortable. I think that was the point. Mm-hmm. What you did know. you like about it? Um. I don't know, just sort of the, I wanted to see how he got there at the end. And like, I don't know, I don't want to spoil too much, but like, you know. It's okay. I, I only saw it yesterday. Listen, if you don't want to hear it, then fast forward this part for like five, well, three yeah, minutes. Like, yeah. yeah. Don't give us the entire part, Yeah, but yeah. Well, and there's, there's an aspect of certain things that he thinks are happening, you find out did not happen. And then because of that, every thing that happens 
I start going, okay, are we about to find out in 10 seconds that that didn't happen? So like when he shoots the guys in the train, I immediately, I'm like, okay, now go back to where he's just getting his ass kicked. And, oh, no, he shot them. Mm. Oh, okay. And then he stabs the the guy he used to work with. I'm like, okay, surely they're going to go back. And Nope. That mm-hmm. actually happened, too. And the <coughs> reveal about the girl. I don't know. I like that. It shows you how it's life good. is, uh, even for people that are on the edge, yeah. uh, all about perspective. Your truth is different than the other person's truth, right? Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what I found so kind of interesting about it. The the way they worked Batman into it. But then the the original twist that they put on, and I'm like, that's bullshit. No, no, you can't have that. And then they turned it around. I like the movie. All right. I was entertained. Steve Dangle. I liked it. <laughs> they should put that on the Joker Listen, poster. I didn't come in here planning to give a movie review. If somebody out there could edit in a Joker poster where it says, I liked it. Steve Bagel. I think it bugged my dad. My dad said, he's like, I I, uh, I don't need to watch that again. I was like, wow. I guess that was all too real. I don't it's need a to tough watch. Well, and, and uh, Steve, is, Steve is kind of right about <laughs> movies. He's uncomfortably thin. Yeah. yeah, but it's, like, it's a violent, it's a gory kind of movie. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. it's a tough one. Um, that's what I mean. That's my, right. uh, you know, Steve's right about movies changing though, because in the '90s, I went I, I, on Christmas or whatever when I was in the states. They were running for some reason the old Batman's, like Batman Forever, like the one with Mr. Freeze and the one with the Riddler and stuff. Like, come on, and they're horrendous. Like, <laughs> they're awful. The Riddler dies because the Batman gives him a riddle that like keeps riddling <laughs> itself. <laughs> And then, like, a, sham- a chandelier falls on him or something. Like, it's so stupid. Yeah. 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 And, like, Two-Face, like, sort of only dies because he loses his footing on a beam. And, like, and, and, and it's just And I'm so watching, dumb. like... The Michael Keaton ones That's are Tommy good. Lee Jones. Yeah. And they made him into this... Like, a guy Carey. with a weird face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had huge actors, Nicole like, accomplished Kim, actors. Yeah. 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 Really, really big in stars. In these shitty, shitty movies. Yeah. Terrible. George Clooney and his... Armor nipples? <laughs> the armor nipples. Come it's on. It's funny that the world lost Robert Downey Jr. to Iron Man. It's like, once he had that role, you don't see him in anything else for the next 15 years. Yeah, like, and now he's, he's like, in yeah. Dr. Doolittle, and yeah. I'm like, mm, are you sure you don't have another Avengers in you? <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I am excited for Dr. Doolittle. No, you're not. The two movies he did no, do not. that I really liked were the Sherlock Holmes ones. Um, no. I don't think you didn't I like those? those? No. I thought they were good. I thought they were entertaining. They're not really particularly deep or whatever, but <laughs> it's a rainy Sunday. I'll do it. Adam, are you going to be able to make it through the show? I don't know. You sound like you if just I'm dropped not, my taco in the like, fryer. That was good. Just Mister, just and... I dropped your taco know, in the fryer. I know. Man, okay. Oh. This, this cold has been so whack because I know, it hit me on like Monday morning. And you know mm-hmm. when it's coming on, you're like, shit. And I thought, ah, I'll be through it in three days. And it should keep, like, every time I defeat one of the bosses, which is one symptom. Your princess is I'm, in another castle. Not, yes. And then another symptom comes at me. Ah. And so now today it's my voice naturally. And it has been all weekend. It's like I, I had a sore throat and then I got through all this other stuff and then it returned to a sore throat. Yeah. Only sore throat second generation. But Adam, don't worry. It pays to have friends. And sometimes your friends offer you advice. And you've been taking all the remedies I've been telling you to. Steve wants me to drink oil of oregano. And I'm like, that only do helps it. when you're trying to kill the cold, the cold at the beginning, which I didn't uh-huh. do. So I'm not doing not it. Not at all it's true. disgusting. You ever had it? Uh, the thing about the common cold is that no matter what you take, in three to four days, they usually say it'll pass. Ah. So it doesn't really matter. All of these old remedies that work usually work because in three to four days, your cold passes. That's sort of what I've heard about Trinko. certain things that certain media personalities uh, may or may not have um, uh, uh, endorsed. You know that there was a set of pills that you oh, could take? Oh, the cold, the, I don't know, can I even say Yeah, it? I guess so. Yeah, cold effects. I've Wasn't there like that. a lawsuit? Now, I was got right into the cold effects thing. Uh, so did I. But I, but I, my understanding is that, that it's all hugwash. It's yeah. hibbity dibbity. Wow, usually, is, it, is, is it hooey? It's hooey. If you just drink some soup, you have some tea, you'll be good. Or you drink, drink a lot of water, you'll be yeah. good in three to four days. Yeah. Calm and cold. It's a long so Park episode body. where they're all, <laughs> everyone has SARS and they're all like, Stan, <coughs> the only cure is chicken soup. <laughs> can, you, can you please go get us chicken soup, Stan? Stan? there's only a 97% chance I'm going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stan. That's right. Stan. What was great about SARS is everybody flipped out about yeah. it. Now, I, I imagine it was not fun to have. For, I think it lasted for like two weeks. However, most people lived. 
Yeah, it sounded like especially healthy adults that were <laughs> very shitty. Going to kill you? No, it was just no. going to make you really sick for a few weeks. Yeah. But anyway, this is what we talk about when the Leafs. Some don't people play. did pass away, did they not? Oh yeah, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah but like those, but. Dude, that like, always happens. Dude, in, but, with the flu. Yeah. yeah, and you know it's funny. They had the um, I had swine flu a couple years ago when it was oh, like. Right. Yummy. Remember when? Remember when swine flu was like the big? There was like, holy shit! The There's pig, the, the, the pig yeah. flu was gonna come, yeah. and it's gonna get you, and oh. it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna throw you out of your house, and then it's gonna smack you, and then it's gonna leave you just to to die, yeah, and die in the gutter. Then it's gonna wedge you and embarrass you in front of that oh. girl you like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So what they found was, this is a year later. I had it the next year. So if you'd had the flu shot the year before, which I never did. You wouldn't have got it, but I got it the next year. So you had what swine flu and no one me, cared. What the doctor said to me was... <laughs> it wasn't trendy. No. It wasn't trendy. He's like, what you have is swine flu. I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, so here's the weird thing with swine flu. We thought, because it's so intense, mm -hmm. that it would hurt very young, like the very young like babies and stuff, and the very old. And that's always the fear with flu, is yeah. young and old. Uh, he's like, unfortunately, with them, it just sort of passes right through. It's everybody in the middle that seems to be really worst affected by it. Oh, no. He says, so you being 26 or 27, whatever I was at the time, he's like, you will be harder affected by this than anybody else, but it'll pass in a few days. And Thanks, Doc. Fine. Yeah, I was like, great. Good to know. <laughs> so, anyway, weird facts. Fun Let's get facts. into who wore the crown, shall we? Sure. Okay. Has there been a game? Yeah, technically, Wednesday, when we last recorded that night, they played. There has. But... And that was... Winnipeg lost. Thank you. Overtime. Where they tied it with 12 seconds left. Got it. I'm back. <laughs> you right. live, the idea here, guys, is if you live generously, life will treat you royally. Why not pour yourself a friend... Why not? ...and a friend a crown royal, because we're going to talk about who wore the crown, where we, with the help of you, recognize one Leafs player each show. It gives it their all for the blue and white, because it's our town, it's our crown, and it's not about what you have, but what you have to give. Let's crown a leaf who lives generously by giving it all for their team. Brought to you by your friends at Crown Royal. Live generously and life will treat you royally. Let's get into it, Steve Dang. Well, not to name the same guy every time because I feel like that m might become boring. But uh, I, I'm going to pick Austin Matthews uh -huh. just because I'm starting to wonder where the hell the team would be with this guy. There's people flirting with the heart conversation. I don't think that's going to happen for a variety of reasons, but... There's a there's a real good shot he could win the heart uh, the heart damn it. Rocket Richard, the Rocket Richard, Richard. Um, and of course he finally pulls to within one of Pasternak and I think he got a hat trick of course the mm -hmm. next game because of course an actual hat trick do you think RV Mr Ricky Vive his <laughs> record goes down this year what was his record fifty four. 50. 53? 54. 54. Yes, yeah. yeah. 54. I think he's on pace for 56. Yeah. So, but do you think he does it? He's got to keep it up. Oh, if he plays all 82, I say he does it. To pull a quote from Myrtle, do I say he Do you think he, does he plays it. all 82? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so. 54. There were some feathers ruffled because um, CJ said that Matthews is playing through pain. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not flustered by it. Okay. I was worried about Morgan Riley because he was playing worse. I started to worry a little bit about Freddie Anderson because he was temporarily playing worse. Matthews is getting better. And over the course of an 82-game season, yeah, like hockey players are going to get hurt. Yeah, I think the, the thing about being an athlete is most people are hurt a little bit all the time. Like sore. Yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's really, really hard. To stay fully healthy. Sidney Crosby at any given moment is battling two or three things. You know, Connor McDavid, like, you know, he had the, didn't he have knee surgery or something in the off season, or he mm -hmm. had some sort of knee injury? Yep. Do we think he's feeling 100%? No, but he's still skating 44 kilometers an hour. So if Matthew's play takes a dip, I will be scared. As for now, it's everyone else that should be scared. He's a monster. Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews, and I think that's a really good choice. It I'm going to take uh, one of the two last men in for the All-Star game. Hey. There was Quinn Hughes and there was Mitchell Marner. And Great pick. You know, as much as, uh, you know, I, I think especially at the beginning of the season, I mean, we were hard on the whole team, but especially on Mitch Marner. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it was less for the contract reasons. Like, you do talk about... Um, okay, well, you know what? I'll just, I'll just go ahead and talk here. And I thought are, you were just going to... Um, <laughs> 
That's cool, man. Whatever. Steve was showing me his hat and it distracted. You got your uh, Eric Lindros hat on there, Steve? Well, it's a William Nylander hat now. So oh, yeah. I see. Is that what you wanted me to call out? So. No, I just wanted to show you it while Adam spoke. You maybe could have showed him that <laughs> when he started talking. You know, Adam, know. maybe I could have. <laughs> you know, maybe I, I could have got some more supportive friends don't have who don't give a, a shit when I watch the Joker. I don't have much of a voice here, but I guess I'm not going to get listened to at all. No. Here, I'm going to shove a donut in my mouth. That way I can't interrupt <laughs> Go for it. You'll still find Here's the thing. Uh, Mitch Marder came into this year and struggled like the rest of the Leafs, and then he got injured. But one thing that was clear when he got injured, well, first off, he was leading the team in points. Mm -hmm. Second, it took him, it took people like five games to catch up. And third, he's come back and in 34 games this year has 42 points. Now I understand, uh, I understand people are well, there's a lot of power play, whatever. I get it. I get it. Um, those don't count. They oh, very no. much count. <laughs> and he's got 15 of those 42 points on the power play. So the rest of them are not. Yeah, it, and that was very front-loaded. So exactly, he's, been, yes. he's been doing so much of his damage at 5-5. Five and five. Bingo. And by the way, th this pace, you said uh, 42 points in 34 games? Yes, that's right. So if he were to play all 82 games, he'd be on a 101-point pace. Right. Which uh, is better would... than last year, last time I checked. Yep, and that's... What did we say when we were yelling and screaming about his number? All right, pressure's on, kid. You, like, you better be even better. For that amount of money, you mm -hmm. better be better than you were last year. And he is. And he is. He is better. And it's 100%. been great. I mean, part of that, too, you can you can credit Sheldon Keefe for that, uh, pairing him with Matthews finally. Um, but, you know, those two, the two highest played, paid players on this team are delivering the way they should. And, you know, Tavares, especially of late, has been even better. Uh, it took him a while to sort of get going, and I say that it, while he plays at almost a point a game pace. Yeah, he had a real tough game against Winnipeg. He did, and, and he was and, still a key player in the third. You're going to have that, but yeah. I think in this case, these are the two guys we needed to succeed. Can you imagine if they weren't? Thank goodness. And Mitch Marner, you get my crown. Absolutely, great pick, Jesse. I gotta bring up the athletic here because Joshua, Jesse, I'm not wearing a hat today. Did you want to talk about that or? Uh, no, I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, Unless sorry. your hat has a specific number oh, on it, okay, you want to point sorry. it out in the middle. I'm of the, the one guy not wearing talking. a hat. So yeah, I and who, the, that. who would do that? Who yeah. would do that? <laughs> what a douchebag! <laughs> kind of a guy would. Do I got to pull up the athletic here because in between games, when you have like these little stretches where teams aren't playing, you always get the the fun personality articles. Yeah. Oh here's, yeah. Here's what they're like on their days off. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. You always get to peek into the to the guys and in the regular. In lives. the Kessel years, it was like, oh, you've been Bozy playing Xbox. Right. Oh, it was painful. Oh, they live together. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, who, who has the basement? Here's here's one of three guys that'll probably be here next year. So here's the human interest piece on that person. Right. Uh, that was the Leafs back then. It was just you couldn't interview Nazem Kadri for every single thing. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Oh God. So tell me the story about your dad bringing you to the hospital and Tom Cochran big leagues playing again. Uh, yeah. One more time. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry, you were saying. <laughs> this time, the focus for this human interest piece was young William Nylander. Mm. Wow! Joshua Cloak, uh, he did a beautiful piece in The Athletic because it's beautiful because it's on William Nylander. But the most <laughs> interesting part I found was the story about how William Nylander gets to practice. How does he get to practice? Anderson said he's never late, but he's always just gets there at the right time. Hmm. He's rarely one. He's first. He's rarely the first one to arrive to the arena before a game. He understands every player has his own routine, but he marvels at Nylander's ability to get ready promptly. I know he definitely likes to push it sometimes. He's extremely fast at getting dressed for the ice. A clock in the dressing room counts down to sixteen hundred when the Leafs take the ice for warmups. It's a countdown that Anderson has said his whole life revolves around. The same is evidently not true for his young teammate. Anderson estimates he starts putting on his own gear anywhere between the 30-minute mark and with 27 minutes to go as the clock counts down. He generally sees Nylander getting dressed in the low 20s, even the 19s. Whoa. Hey. It's crazy. He literally takes two or three minutes to get dressed. He's got it down to a science with all his little straps and stuff he needs to take care of. Nylander said he's always gotten dressed late but never stressed about missing the deadline to walk on the ice. I usually don't like to sit in my gear and wait. So I just wait until the last minute to get ready. Hmm. I think I think it's fascinating that this little piece comes out because 
you kind of understand the narratives that the media has pushed. Mm. If it's like they hear through the guys, like, oh, Nealand, he's always one of the last guys to get dressed. He's always the last guy in the locker room to get ready to get on the ice. Then they start going like, okay, he's the last guy out there. Does he care so much? And then he has a right. bad season. Yeah. Easy article, you push it out. Nylander doesn't care. Hot dogs, hot dogs. Dog. Yeah, we're fucked. Gets, gets his equipment on last every time the guys are out. But then yeah. you you learn you read this when he's having a great season. You're like, oh, that's just he just doesn't like sitting in his gear and waiting around. That's a different dude. That's just a different, different dude. dude. Instead of, <laughs> instead of lazy and lackadaisical, he's like enigmatic and whimsical. Right, and I find yes. it so fascinating how easy you can bend the narrative to whatever you want it to be. Right. right. When in, a, in actual fact, what it is, is probably a guy who doesn't like downtime. Sounds to me yeah. like this is a guy who's like, I got, sh- I got stuff to do on my own time. And when I get to the ring, I don't want to sit around my equipment for 20 minutes and, and then soak <laughs> and then get out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And there are some people that like that. Uh-huh. Like for me, I'm always late for everything. So when I do show up early, I, I really enjoy it and I take my time and enjoy it, which is rare. Mm-hmm. But... With Nylander, it's like there needs to be that little bit of edge of I need yeah. to I got a deadline to meet. And you know, I don't know how you guys were in high school uh, or in the years of university that you spent or the year of university I spent. Uh, everything was done last minute. Mm-hmm. I don't do well unless it's on a deadline. It's There's the, a certain push that you get when yeah. it's like this thing needs to be done now. Yes, yeah. and I think that's why I do well in my career is because everything's last minute. Mm-hmm. Everything has to be. My wife used to write essays and like start them an hour before they were due. Wow. I don't know how. she could do it. (laughs) Because, and every single time. Mechanical. She she was a monster. She was, if I ever tried to do that, I'd fail everything. I I just, I cannot operate that way. Some people do. Hmm. Yeah. No, you got to do what's best for you. That's cool. Right. It's a really cool piece. I like that. That, Is that why you get your crown? That's why he gets my crown this week, because we get a little peek into the mind of William Nylander. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's there's so much more. It's that was just a whole paragraph of the article. I love when they could do that yeah, stuff on going. guys you know nothing about. Right? Like we know a lot about Matthews. We know a lot about Marner. Know a lot about Tavares. Know a, lot, a little bit more about Freddie. Nylander is just. I think the reason that it's been so negative towards him is because he hasn't put a lot out there for you to know. For as long as he lives, he will not be a good interview. No. He and that's uh, okay. Mike and he will Mike Ajello, when we were covering the Marlies together when Nylander was still there is like uh, it's it's. What do you call him? Like 90 or less Willie or something? He, It was something, it was really inappropriate the way it was worded. But I pull out uh, pull out my phone after we're done recording, and I'm like, 87 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah. Wow. He comes out for a full press conference, answers like five questions in a minute and a half, and he's done. That's wow. that's just how he operates. Amazing. Yeah. Well, um, what, do you, what do you want to know? I, I, I don't have anything to tell you. And that's what... That's, excuse me, that is Who Wore the Crown for this week. Brought to you, as always, by uh, Crown Royal. Next time the puck drops, why not? I just thought I'd point at my hat instead. Live generously and treat your Leafs crew to a Crown Royal old-fashioned. Give them a a why not. People have been waiting. Why not? Thank you. you. Thank you. Last night. Because no one can hear you point at your hat. I know. My buddy scolded me. He's like, okay, listen, I've heard you dial back the why nots. No, you've got (laughs) to give the people what they want. That's bullshit. Yeah, Yeah, you do. do. You're you're the band that goes on stage and plays all the album cuts that nobody wants to hear. (laughs) Like, we're here for the singles, okay? I don't know. I don't know how much Eric Clapton you guys know, but I I have friends that went to a Eric Clapton concert, and they paid two hundred and fifty dollars per ticket. Oh gosh! And they and Eric Clapton gets out on stage, and he's got thirty guitars behind him, and uh, he starts off the show not with a song but with a statement, and the statement is there will be no rock and roll tonight. <laughs> and Eric Clapton proceeded to play thirty different guitars, sometimes a couple <laughs> guitars per song, all of his hits, without any pace to them. Oh, is that is that not God. just masturbating in front yes. of an audience? Yeah. Like that's yeah. just... thousand percent what that is. Yes, <laughs> Jesus. Yes, Eric Clapton never been accused of being a nice guy or a friendly guy or a guy who cares what his audience wants. But all the same, you would expect that he would at least know that. You're Isn't Layla asshole. about someone's wife? Yeah, George Harrison's wife, one of the Beatles' wife, who what he ended up marrying. T- what a dick. Yeah, and then divorcing because he fell out of love. Wow. There's a song by Sheryl Crow, and I believe it's called The Only Thing You Bring Me Is Down, and that is about Eric Clapton. Oh, really? Yeah. 
<laughs> Can you imagine having a song like like Taylor Swift just like I knew you were trouble? <laughs> she was <laughs> like, I'm the only you thing ruined you, my life. Yeah, you only think you're a new musician. Yeah, like wow. that is that's man, that's damning. All right. Um, yeah. All right. yeah. Well, but, I mean, guy can play the guitar. That's about it. Sure could. Sure could. Like Last it. night was the first time since 1990 that a Battle of Alberta would determine first place in the division this late into the season. Wow. When you think about it, right? Like after 1990, you know, the Flames sort that they ran into New and trouble. Sort of, you know, a couple of years later, started to fall off, and the Oilers started to fall off. Still, that was 30 years ago. 20. 30 years ago. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah, yeah. 30 years we ago. Gotta, it's not 2010. got to adjust that yeah. thing. <laughs> I've been... Wow, yeah, you're right. 30 years now. ago. Yeah. Jeez. And the Canadian dollar fell off and whatever. So the, those two teams were pretty bad throughout the, the, that early mid-90s. But, like, that, that's why I said 30 years. Like, you know, you throw in all those factors. How don't you luck into it once? Well... And we're not even talking about the playoffs. We're talking about first place in January. When you think, like, the 2004, 05, 06... Um, um, Flames and then Oilers were pretty good. Like both of those teams made the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, in back-to-back seasons that were spread. And between I think Ottawa three was in there too. weren't they? weren't they in the '04 final uh, or '03 or? I want to say Can- Canada had like <clears throat> Canada was in like three or four straight finals. Yeah, and no success. No <laughs> success. But it goes to show that it's been a while since both teams have been good at the same time. And this, you know, this this rivalry, this battle of Alberta that our bro- or our, our our dads talked about. Um, you know, really hasn't existed in the same way, in, much in the way that the Montreal-Toronto rivalry hasn't really existed for a long time. No, it's always been <coughs> chippy. The games have been fun, but the stakes just haven't been there. They're not there. It's been more Ottawa-Toronto, especially in the yes. early Yes, yeah. yes, without question. And you know what? Ottawa got the better end of that most of the time, except yeah. for the uh, the playoff series that Ottawa or, uh, Toronto won. Well, that was the best part of the Battle of Alberta. Oh. The, 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 the Leafs losing seven of eight in the regular Ontario. season. Ontario, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then friggin' uh, beating Ottawa, <laughs> sweeping them somehow, and right. yeah, it was ridiculous. And that goes to show the rules in the playoffs are different. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, and they catered to the Leafs back yeah, then. Yeah, the ob- objectively worse Leafs mm-hmm. were better than Ottawa in the postseason. Who knew? <laughs> yep. Um, now, Obje- well, okay, objectively worse and dirtier. <laughs> oh, Leafs. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yep, yep. Um, so you know the game didn't disappoint, uh, and which is great for the rivalry. It's awesome. What is, and I'm going to leave the room for a second to warm up my coffee. There's <laughs> nothing worse than cold coffee on a, on a sore throat. But what is better, and I'm asking you both, uh-huh. better rivalry in the sport, Cassian Kachuk or Doughty Kachuk? Okay. Think about Good that. Good question. Break it down. Give me a sec. I'll be right back. Steve, where do you side? Well, well I, know my pick. I don't know. Should I wait for Adam to no, leave the room and that way it's go. a secret? Uh, I am going to say uh, Cassian Kachuk. By far. Um, Doughty Kachuk has always felt, um, you know what? If it was just left alone, Mm -hmm. I would like it so much more. But now every time they play, oh, everybody, get ready for fireworks. It's Kachuk Doughty. And I'm like, you are not bullying me into caring about the Flames versus Kings. Right. You are not. And even though they're in the same division, uh, their rivalry... Unless they play a couple times in the playoffs or something, will never be as important to me as uh, Flames Oilers. Flames Oilers is timeless. It's it's what all the best rivalries are, which is regional, <laughs> right? Regional and as of yesterday, fueled by hatred. <laughs> What's the highway that goes from? Uh... Uh, Edmonton to Calgary. Friggin' Adam with his microwave. I don't know. Oh, Wait, Adam. Okay. Adam would know. Because he's gone, it's called the 25. The 25. Man, it's just... <laughs> I remember going up and down the 25 and being like, I'm in Alberta right now. Yeah, it means more because you can take the 25 up from Edmonton to Calgary. Adam, what's the highway between Edmonton and Calgary? 50, isn't it 53? 53. Know. We, nailed it. We made up 25 this. because we it's didn't not 20, know. What the hell is it? Is it Highway 3? I feel like it's got a 3 in it. Hold on. Does not matter. Everyone no. who's listening to this from the West Coast is getting so mad at us. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, they've... Uh, Dowdy Kachuk has had great two. moments. Fucking two. The two. Sorry. Uh, Dowdy Kachuk has had great moments. <sighs> it's... Yeah. It's it will never anything Oilers Flames will always get an unfair advantage. Yeah, yeah. to me, okay. and at least for me as well. There's there's actual uh, 
aggressiveness going on now. <laughs> like, I feel like with Dowdy Kachuk, it was just kind of words, but with Cassie and his fists Yeah, it'd be like being words thrown. and like, ooh, I, I, I jam right. my shoulder into you. Oh, At no. least with Cassie and someone <clears throat> tried to eliminate another guy's head <laughs> a couple of times. And yeah. they're being coy about it. Right. Whereas Cassian's like, no, I would like to remove this person's head. Right. Yeah. Which, I will beat him into a bloody pulp if they allow it. Which, I don't know, is that not yeah, better? The, the post game was good yesterday between the two of them. Like, oh, yeah. it was both both had great quotes. Now, well, I was I was just saying to Jesse, <laughs> I, there's so I would expect Kachuk is going to get a hearing. I haven't seen that. He, that I was haven't seen that tomorrow. He, he is. Yeah. Kachuk. Not oh, Cassian. Kachuk. Cassian. Oh, no, no. Is. Cassian's is scheduled. See, for Kachuk interesting. to me needs to get one too. If you look at some of the replays. Yeah. He's clearly tar. He's you have to, you have to at least acknowledge that the puck exists in the NHL mm-hmm. to throw a hit like that, and he doesn't. And there's multiple different angles <laughs> at it on it this good morning. Way of well, it. you do like that's the that's the yeah. actual rule. Yeah, and so it's funny that it's never enforced. No, it isn't ever. It isn't, but. And especially with the Department of Player Safety being what a wreck it is, mm-hmm. no. there's going to be no way that anything happens. They both. I, I do. I think that Kachuk should get as much as Cassian. No, but clearly, when you look at, I think you got to wrote. There's a there's an angle on Twitter right now, and I'm looking for it, and I can't find it. Um, I have him here. Okay, do you I have the Kachuk, you, you have the Kachuk one that he's just. Where it's like him, he just sort of skates into the corner and nails Cassian's head. The one, yeah, the first one. If you make, and I've always said that if you make head contact, it should be an automatic. Yeah. That's the thing. He makes head contact, and he might have meant to, quote unquote, hit him somewhere else. And I'm sure, I don't don't know if Kachuk is trying to injure Cassian. I don't think so. I think it's more along the lines of he's trying to embarrass him. And and that's fine. Go out out and embarrass each other all day. I love that kind of competitiveness. Absolutely. But the... The second you make head contact, whether it's meant or not, that should be what the NHL really... If the NHL wants to come into the new millennium, which it still has not done, um, then that would be my thing to them. Have a minimum. You hit the guy's head. Doesn't matter if you meant to or not. And that'll get guys thinking, oh, man, I can't really do that. Cassian, uh, his response... Uh, was a little aggressive, but I think it looks <laughs> a little, uh, a lot aggressive. I think Cassian's response looks a lot more re- aggressive because Kachuk didn't fight back and very clearly got light on his skates. Like Cassian, yeah. literally at one point, picks him up with an arm, like with one arm. And he I know went Cassian's lit body and was yeah. like, "I'm gonna get us a power." Yeah, player. like everybody who's yeah. like, "Oh my god, I can't believe he did that." Remember who he's throwing around? It's Kachuk. Yeah. This is what he wants. This is all theater. And this is what these guys, him and his brother, are brilliant at this. Whenever Kadri got it, I'm like, I don't like it because he's on my team, but I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I understand that you don't like him. I So out of the three, I don't know, I, I think there were three incidents that could potentially be punished. Mm-hmm. And as of right now, I don't know exactly what the status is on all of them. There's the Kachuk hits. There's the Cassian uh, quote unquote fight yep. or beating, and then there's Cassian's post game comments, which I was saying yeah, to he, Jesse before he you got the in. Word. He did, and I think that's the that to me is a slam dunk fine. Oh yeah. If yeah. what Tortorella did is a fine, you got you got to at least I, it doesn't. I don't know if it has to be a suspension, but you there's got to be something for that. Suspended. Will there be yeah. a five part yeah. memo on it? Probably not, no. mm. <laughs> because no one from the NHL was directly embarrassed. Ah, right. no, yes. Colin Campbell. Colin Colin Campbell. Campbell. Oh, just yeah. I think and on, it wasn't in an email. Oh. <laughs> so there's that. On Monday night when we're all watching The Bachelor, I think we get a tweet that says Cassian's suspended for three games. No, it's when when are we gonna be done recording this podcast? Like as soon as <laughs> No, but we know his me his hearing is until four. Is, so Cassian's the only guy who's like doomed. <clears throat> like yeah. he's for sure yeah. getting something. Yeah. Kachuk, I think, might skate away scot free. You don't need a hearing to get under two games though, isn't it? No, if if it's a hearing, I think it could be five or more. Oh. No, if it's in person, oh, it can in person. be five or more. Oh. But if a phone it's over call. the phone, then it can be anyway. five or less. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or four or less or whatever. Or something I, like yeah. that. Yeah. I bet it gets three. Yeah. And I bet Kachuk gets nothing. <sighs> Which is unfair, I think. Well, it's, yeah, I agree. I don't like that. because. Well, first of all, how many times have we seen a guy beat an unwilling combatant? I think it happens a lot mm-hmm. these days. Um and Kachuk has already said, I'm not going to fight you. So Cassian fell for it. Kachuk wins this, by the way. Kachuk yes. absolutely won. And then the power play that they had got, got, got the game-winning goal. Yeah. He, I like, th- I'm, if I'm an Edmonton Oiler today, I'm pissed at Zach Cassian. But I, I, he sh- I, think I don't think any of them are. You- well, then you should be. 
Oh, they should be, but yeah. they aren't. Is it is it a little disrespectful that he didn't fight him? No, I don't know about disrespectful. It's you're just, there to win. Who cares about disrespect? He yeah. he out, okay. he out a, a rat found an easy mark, <laughs> yeah. and he worked his magic. Oh boy, yeah. did he ever! He okay. If you're willing to take that beating, which Kachuk mm. is mm -hmm. literally willing to take the beating and dish mm -hmm. none of it out, um, Cassian's got to be the easiest mark on the Oilers, isn't he? Oh he, yeah. You're you're Perfect. looking for. The guy you can most easily get mad. Zach Cassian. Mm -hmm. Easy. Mm -hmm. Now, he might be the shit out of you, but if you survive it, which Kachuk did, you have a pretty good chance of giving your team an advantage and, and winning the game, and they we're did. We're okay with, because the unwritten rule in hockey is, if you do that, you got to stand up and fight the guy. Right. And we're okay with him skirting that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Here's how I look at it from start to finish. The first hit from Kachuk I thought was the worst one. Yep. So there's the first one. It looked like it was a lot of head contact. Mm -hmm. um, then the second one happens. It looked a lot more clean than the first, but mm -hmm. in the moment at that speed, and if you're Cassian, and of course your bucket pops off again, I think you th you think, okay, he did it to me again. I didn't get a call the first time. Mm -hmm. I got to do what every hockey player has done since the beginning of time and stick up for myself. So he drops the gloves. Kachuk turtled. If but Kachuk punches back, we're not talking about this we're today. We're not, but he knows. He has told Cassian before. Cassian even referenced it in the press conference. He said, he, he said, he told me last year that he wouldn't fight me because I was just a fourth liner. Well, now I got 13 goals and he still yeah. won't fight me. You know why? Because he's smarter than you. Yeah. Because he's smarter than you, Zach. He just outweighed you again. And you know what? And Kachuk got him again in the press conference because he said, listen, that's not a fair trade. I fight Zach Cassian. Edmonton wins because Calgary doesn't have me. It is true. And he's, Someone, and he's right. He's yeah. absolutely right. I saw the comparison made. I don't know how much I agree with this comparison. So McDavid is exempt from it because he's just this oh, he mut mutant from another dimension. Yeah. But like, what if Lucic tries to go at Drysaddle for a hit that Drysaddle laid? Yeah, Drysaddle skates away. Yes. As he should. Yes. So yes. I don't I don't know if the skill discrepancy is quite the same between no, Cassian and Kachuk, but it the there is a chasm there. The pr the principle is what we're talking about, not mm -hmm. the exact if you want an exact apples to apples comparison, good luck finding that on your own. I'm yeah. sure you can do that. Right. But you know what the principle is behind this, which is if you are a more skilled player, even if you're tough, don't fight some goon. Like Zach Cassian, as we've talked about before has played extremely well, has got his personal life under under control, yep. which is awesome. He plays with an edge. He plays on that edge. Unfortunately, sometimes that edge can go against you, like what we saw last night. Yep. That Nothing can a... be taken away from the effort and the, the progress that Zach Cassian has made. However, he is not either Kachuk. Yeah. Right. Right. And when a guy says, when a, when a goon like Marchand, which is what those guys are, they're all in that same rat group, if they don't, if they say they're not going to fight you, they're not. You know Bra why? Brady, Brady drops the gloves. In that situation, Brady's I think Brady drops the gloves. Brady's going to stop dropping them eventually. Someone Brady drops them now him. because it's entertaining. I guarantee you, when the Senators are good, Brady Kachuk is not fighting. Why would he fight? Why would he fight? There's no reason. Brad Marchand. When you see Brad Marchand actually fight, you see him get hit all the time, punched who in the is, face all the time. Who was the guy who ragdolled Sean Avery? Remember, Avery wouldn't fight him, and so the guy just humiliated yeah. him by, like, yanking him to the ice three or four times? Like, should was Cassian just have done that? Stars player? I really can't I don't remember. Know. I don't know. I think it might have been while Avery was on the Stars. Oh, okay. I, I can't I seem remember. to remember a green jersey in there. I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember. So, but I don't even know, that, I'm... what is that? A two-minute roughing penalty? Was, was, that... it, was it Clarkson? You know what? I think it was Clarkson. Nah, maybe it was. I think it was David Clark. I just Googled Clarkson ragdolls Avery. Why are we surprised? Clar up. Clarkson went to the extremely sped up uh, career trajectory. Yeah, that is Clarkson. Clarkson <clears throat> had a very condensed Milan Lucic career where there was a time where he was a physical force, could bury 30 goals, and then when it fell off, boom, it was gone. Yes. Forever. Um yeah, I think you're thinking of David Clark. Yeah. yeah, why? I don't know. Okay. I need I need you two to help me explain to me why I don't really blame Zach Haskin for what he did. I'm trying to figure it out. Because that's just the order things happen in hockey, isn't it? Yeah, Zach Cassian did what Zach Cassian does, except he lost because Kachuk outsmarted him. Yeah, Not was... even just Zach Cassian, though. Like, it's 
every hockey player that I think it's also tough for Zach Cassian because William Nylander gets decked a couple times. Mm -hmm. We're going, where are his teammates to stick up for William Nylander? Zach Cassian gets decked. It's all right. Now you got to pay the price. Yeah. So so he gets clocked potentially in the head uh -huh. at, le at least once, maybe twice. Yeah. And now we're expecting him to get up and fight his own battle. Yeah, because that's the game Kachuk was playing and he goaded him into yeah. it and he played it well. No, what I'm saying the expectation is for Cassian to stick up for himself. Well, he doesn't have to. No, it's he does. But no, you can hold no, back if you want. But sticking up for yourself and going after a guy right. outside of the play. And taking yourself out of it is not sticking right. up for yourself. Yeah. That, to me, is where you cross the line. Listen, hockey culture is hockey culture, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you were to really put some truth serum in Edmonton Oilers players last night and this morning, especially when cooler heads prevail, yeah, and you were to ask them, Veritas serum, I believe it's called. Ah, uh, yes, it is. Um, if you were to, if you were to ch have them chug that, I bet you they tell you, I much rather would have win won than see Zach Cassian or at least go to overtime and see Zach Cassian give away two points. Because yeah. at least if it goes to overtime, the Flames only edge the Oilers by one point. Now they've edged them by two. Now yeah. the Oilers have to win two games to surpass Calgary. And that's the problem. This, is not, this isn't just a game. This is a divisional game against the, the rival that is three hours down the road from you. And you're a team that has surprised everyone, shocked everyone. And you're... And you, you, one of your guys, who's been really good, one of the shockingly good guys, gave away two points. That's what happened. Zach Cassian, Zach Cassian gave away two points. Adam, I, if you think Bob Nicholson, Ken mm. Holland, Dave Tippett, Wayne Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky, mm. every one Paul of the Oilers, well, potentially Oilers. Wayne Gretzky. Here, hold on, let me but... look up the 1986 Oilers. I'm sure they're on play page. <laughs> yeah, 1986 Oilers. Roster. I I think you are drastically. Uh, Enzo un... Tikkanen, Andy Moog. <laughs> oh, you're reading yeah. the roster. I thought you were reading the front. Charlie Huddy. <laughs> yeah, man. I I I think you're misreading uh, NHL players. Kevin McClellan. Wait, what? What do you think? Mo LeMay. I think he's misreading NHL players. Like, oh, Mike we'd rather Kuchel get the Minsky. two points. No, they'll look at this no. as an investment. Right now, Edmonton's sitting in the wild card spot at fifth with 53 points. Calgary is currently sitting in first place with 55. Last night, that fight that he tried to get Kachuk into was worth uh, either being first in division or being in a wild card spot. I think you'd rather be first in the division. Yeah, than I having, agree. Hey, I'm a tough guy, hockey guy. They're looking at it. They're not looking at it as Zach shouldn't have fought. They're looking at it as we got jobbed. Guaranteed. They didn't though. No, but they, no, but I'm, they, I'm they telling got, you that's how they think about it. They got it. jobbed, but it's their own fault. They got jobbed. I think so. Yeah. Someone else should have stuck up for Cassian. I think. I'm trying to think of who else See, was on Edmonton, the ice. I know McDavid was one of them. Jesse, to your point, if Edmonton goes to overtime last night. They are they are now tied with the Coyotes for second place. If they lose to Calgary in overtime, they're oh. tied with the Coyotes for second in the division. Can, can I just, before we continue into the camera, I am so sorry, Arizona Coyotes fans, for ruining your season entirely. What? Oh, my God. I was like, oh, Darcy Kemper, forget a Vesna. He's having like a heart caliber season. He gets hurt, and they are just nosediving right now. Yeah. I think They just got Taylor Hall. They got shut out back-to-back -back games. Is that good? Can someone help me Not out? Good. Is that good? Not good. Their last ten, they're five and five. <laughs> yeah, they they're hold on. They're everyone falling. around them has been sucking. So the Flames are first season. in the Pacific with a negative eight goal differential. Can yeah. someone explain that? It's the difference uh, between the Bill teams, Peters era. Yeah, yeah, teams now at the beginning of the season, like it's crazy. It seems like half the league has been, hey, they start off hot and now they suck, or they start they start off slow and now they're great. Everyone has either had a winning or losing streak of at I, least nine games, except for Washington and Boston. Like yeah. that's it. Yeah, and they're the Can only I, two steady teams so far. And while Basically. St. Louis hasn't been too bad either, St. Louis, um, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Count them. But let me let me ask you this: um, Is there anything more damning, personal stuff aside? Okay, is there anything more damning about the way Babcock and Peters coached? I'm not talking about what they did off the ice. I'm talking about strategic systems than bo how both of their teams have done since they left. Mm. Oh, I know. Is there anything more yeah. damning and more proof and more evident? That the game is not what those guys are anymore. Mm -hmm. Forget. I don't think Bill Peters isn't coaching in the NHL again. I don't Bill think. Bill Peters has no track record of success no. in professional <laughs> hockey. But at least he kept saying like, that. Like, but he plays the Babcock system. He's a disciple. Fucking. He I assisted guess. him for years in Detroit. Yeah. Uh, to so many first round exits. But the point is, 
is there any more? Like, I don't think you need more proof than Calgary and Toronto being where they're at. Toronto and Calgary are a point apart. Calgary's got 55. Toronto's got 54. I didn't realize how deep of a hole the Leafs were in. <laughs> Huge. Because they went Huge. on that ridiculous run, and I'm like, what do you mean if we lose this next game, we're one point up on Florida? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Well, but there was a point when the idea of an Atlantic team even taking a wild card spot was outrageous to think about. Yeah. And that's because the Metropolitan has calmed down a little bit. Yes. Uh, and the Atlantic has gotten really hot, especially Tampa and Toronto. We'll talk about that in a second. But Well, Philly you know, was like in the second wild card and on pace for 100 points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a while. I was like, what so, the hell is this? It's almost still. Um, yes. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this about the uh, Oilers and, uh, and Flames last night. Sure. McDavid steals the puck off of Hannafin. Literally yeah. takes the puck off of Hannafin. Yoink. And then blasts into the, into the flame zone, scores a goal. Oh. Does that make him now worse than Riley, or as bad as Leafs fans thought Riley was when McDavid deked out Riley? Where did it happen? <laughs> Where did it happen? It happened in uh, uh, it happened in the between the blue lines. No, no. Uh, what city? It happened in Calgary. I think it was in Calgary last then, night. Then, then no, not worse. Not worse. Okay. So it works. I don't see any Calgary Flames fans freaking out about Noah Hannafin this morning. I'm just throwing that out. Because it happened there. Not worse. Right. All, the Morgan and Riley's they won. Still the worst defenseman to ever play hockey. So oh man, there is that. Yeah, yeah guys, yeah. I know he scores like seventy points or whatever. But <laughs> in, have you looked at these defensive statistics? In in the They're battle, terrible. in the battle of former fifth overall picks who got stripped by Connor McDavid for a goal. <laughs> ah, you see, cool. Pierre Maguire, Damn. Steve Dale. Holy <laughs> shit. Wow. Nice uh, work. I would say uh, Morgan Riley more humiliating. <laughs> well done. <laughs> you can't remember any number, but you can remember stupid drafts, dumb shit like that. Oh my god. Okay, now here's here's yeah. one. Give me one. Give me two. Move it on. I can handle it. Move it on. After eight straight losses. Eight. One point out of a total 16. And by the way, this is the second time this team has done this this year. Actually? Mm-hmm. Yes. They have had two eight straight losses for the first time since the 1940s. Merit. Montreal scored on their own net and took one of the league's worst teams to overtime. Montreal scored all three goals last night. <laughs> That's funny. But they had <laughs> Ilya, I'm going to give you a Rolex for your number, Ro- Kovalchuk. Yep. Score mm-hmm. the winner. No two win. I saw, uh, I think it was Mark Dumont um, saying, oh my God, this Flames Habs game, or Flames, sorry, this uh, Habs Sens game sucks. And I'm like, yeah, you miss us now, don't you? <laughs> you miss the Leafs now. No, that was. Uh, I did, hey, find it, I did find it extremely funny that there's no Toronto game last night. And they like, it's like, whoa, we got this blistering matchup of Ottawa-Montreal. <laughs> which they knew before the season at least one of those teams was going to be bad. Yeah. However, the Calgary-Edmonton uh, game made up for it. Wow. Is what it is. What yeah. a great game. And thank goodness, right? If you yeah. work for Hockey Night in Canada, so, that's for sure. Kovalchuk's averaging a ice time of 19 minutes and 57 seconds. With he's Montreal. putting up points. Joining the well, he's played two games and they have no players. Yeah, they're they have nobody. The yeah. sign the sign of a really good organization is can you survive the injuries? Pit, Pittsburgh is the best organization in the NHL. Yeah, that's a little on. Yeah. And I can't believe I was how dare, how dare I? Can I just issue an apology right now? This is the second one now. Forever saying the Penguins should just give up. My god. They don't Crosby's die. Back this week as well. Who who is Sidney Crosby? Oh, I don't know if mm. you've heard of him. Never heard of him. No. But, yeah, he's not going to play tonight against uh, Arizona, but he should be back by I think it's Wednesday. Since or Tuesday. since he's gotten hurt, they're the best team in the league. Yeah, that's fucked. Shout out, <laughs> shout out Malkin. That is ridiculous. Shout out Brian Rust. No. Look at Brian <laughs> Rust totals. Yeah, I do. Look, at, it's it's absurd. And does that guy not personify Mark Donk and Buzz Flibbit? His name is Brian Rust. If you gave a non-hockey fan three names, you go, name which one of these guys is real. Mark Donk, Brian Rust, Buzz Flibbit. Most people I don't think would be able to do it. I don't know what you'd pick. Confidently. Brian Rust is, is the most reasonable, I think, of them all. Right. By the way, no. in uh, when, when I used to go see Toronto Rock Lacrosse games at Maple Leaf Gardens back in the day, they had a house band playing at the time. And they were called... And they were a classic rock band. Donk Flibbit. And they were called Rust. Mm. Now let's say, oh, hello, fans, we're going to commercial break. Let's say a little Rust. Rust. Yeah, that's what would happen. Followed by the Trues because that's they're at everything. Yeah. The Penguins <laughs> are 17, 6, and 4 without Crosby heading into tonight. Stupidity. And uh, <laughs> you got to shout out Dominic Cahoon. 
as well. Who is Buzz Flibbit? <laughs> He's uh, he's been amazing. Dominic Cahoon, the the whole that so this is all from that acting a fool in the and, tweet. And uh, Tristan Jari, who's on his way to his first All Star game. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Like their backup goalie sort of is going to the All Star game. Unbelievable. It's is, preposterous. Is by the way, for in terms of hockey Twitter, is Fuleman having an MVP caliber year? He's having a very good year. He's having a great. Did you read his Babcock piece on p- for pension no, plan puppets? But I saw good reviews. It was so 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 good, yeah. so well written, and it was exactly. It was like, wow, that's exactly how I felt at that point. Wow, that's exactly how I felt at and that who, point. And who the hell is acting a fool, man? He's having a Brian Russ season. <laughs> he is. He is. <laughs> no, I'm... or Jane Ketzel year from last year. He's 40, oh, He's on base for forty goals. There you go. What I'm saying. So sorry, sorry you were ahead. talking about the Habs. I'm talking about the Habs. Yes, but it's interesting you bring up Pittsburgh. Really interesting because um, Connor McKenna, who is the TSN, we're, are we, we're done with the Habs. No, no, no. I'm going to Connor McKenna from T- <laughs> okay. TSN Montreal. Okay. Basically, I was using the Penguins uh, going through injuries and going, "Wow, they're so amazing." But, and then I'm, I look at the Habs going through about the same amount of injuries and going, "And they're dying." Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so, so it's a it's an organization that's doing really well, and the Habs. And Connor McKenna made a good point a couple of weeks ago along those along those points. About, you know, and, and Eric Engels brought this up too. There is, you know, Montreal has had some serious injuries to some very important players, yep. right? However, Jonathan Drouin was having a career season. One of the things that Connor McKenna said is yes, but the difference between a great organization and an okay one is depth. Yep. And Bergevin was supposed to be the guy that could get you the depth that would get you through. Now, I understand that the Penguins have two Hall of Famers in Malkin and Crosby, and my understanding is this year at least one of them has been in the lineup each game. Yeah. But, it's very rare they don't have either. Very yeah, rare. But I would argue that Carey Price might be on his way to the Hall of Fame. So there's your Hall of Fame player, probably the most important position in the sport, and has not been great. And I, What if you stink for the entire back half of your career? I don't know then. Right? Like, if he retired now, maybe. But, like... Yeah. Like, what if he plays another... How many years are left on his deal? Six? Seven? Mm-hmm. Six more years. What if he stinks for six... For half a dozen more years? Do we think... Uh, do you think Carey Price stinks right now? He's yes, average. His which, numbers... for the money he's getting paid, stinks. Yeah. I don't think he's average, man. I, I don't. Let me bring him up. Below average? Well below. Especially for a $10 million goaltender. And we t- like he's getting paid miracle worker money. This is what we talked about with yeah. Marner and Matthews. It's I don't care what you're going through. I don't care who's playing against you, who you're playing with. You're getting miracle money. Mm-hmm. Give me a miracle. When he signed that contract, it was after 17-18. It was an eight-year deal, and he had just put up a 311 goals against average and a 900 save percentage. Now he was injured mm-hmm. a lot of that year. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't matter. Bergevin still did it. You don't give an eight-year contract to a guy who was injured the whole time. Right, but what he what he had come off of is four straight years of 927, 933, 934, and 923. Okay. So you go, okay, well, but I agree with you, Steve. After an injury-plagued year, I would have been like, no. And Carey Price's people would have been like, then fine, trade us. So here's what's happened since. Last year, he had a 918 with a 249 goals against average. This year, it's a 295. He's averaging letting in three goals a game. But more importantly, his save percentage is 904. That's Ugh. not, guys, that's not average. It's below league That average. is not average. I'm trying to find the tweet. I want to say it was, as I said to you, uh, Carey Price has got to post a 920 before the Habs are going to get back to the postseason. He's got to post a 920. He should be, for the money he's getting, money in the bank, 920. Now, maybe his team's offering him no help. But yeah, man, how, much, how much of that is there's no defense in front of them? I, they're I, bad. Or the system they are they're bad. playing isn't But helping. they were they were yeah. never great. That was the thing. Like last year when they made their push, we never nobody nobody accused the Montreal Canadiens of being this oh this great team that got robbed. It was this scrappy team that almost got in. I, I this, tr- they were always going to be a scrappy team that was biting at the edges. The problem yeah. is that they they run into some injuries. I'm sorry when as Steve said even even with injuries. I'm sorry, Carey Price admittedly by himself has not been good. He has not been good. And if you watch like the highlights for every Habs game, they all feature at least one Carey Price robbing a goal <laughs> save. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I don't I don't know how you bring Bergevin back. He's he's got Listen, he's had a clear problem for at least a couple years and free cap space on one of the richest teams and in the sport. And done nothing with it. It's 
he hasn't been able to. He hasn't He's leveraged, tried. though. He hasn't, try, he hasn't even leveraged young assets. Like, what he could have done I is what, what, he does. what the Ducks apparently are going to do, which is, hey, we'll take your, your crappy contract, but you got to pay yeah. us young assets. Montreal could have done that, and they didn't do it. And that's where that depth comes from. If you had done that a couple years ago, even if you were making a push for the playoffs, <coughs> and you get some guy who's like, I don't know, the next for a leaf sick, like Andreas Janssen, Kasperi Cabin, and something like that, but you take on a bad, you know, $6 million contract, then that player is a fully developed player at this point, and he's the depth you're looking for. And that that is a problem. You're absolutely right. And that's, you know, I, I, I know Eric Eric Engels said when he was on the show last, or uh, the last show, he said their effort has been unimpeachable. What's unimpeachable, or sorry, what's peachable for me <laughs> is, or impeachable, is the lack of skill. Yeah, if they try every single night, which the Habs clearly do if you watch them, and they still cannot win, it's on the GM. It's yeah. on the GM. The coach has them motivated. Yeah. It's, Claude Julian's that's the scary thing. Julian's getting the best out of his players. Yeah, it yes. that way. That's 100%. terrifying. But that was... They were always going to need some injury luck, as in, like, hope, hope, hope and pray that we don't have any injuries. They were always going to need that. Yeah. We need but that coming in. And here's the thing. Penguins like, without Crosby, about, Blues without Tarasenko. We, yeah, and we talk about, like, well, you know, maybe maybe um, uh, Montreal's defense could use some work. Shea Weber is having the best year he's had in five years. Yeah. Jeff Petrie's on fire. Like, I'm sorry. Carey Price has help. This is also on Carey Price. This is. Yeah. I know nobody wants to blame the goalie. I think in this instance, the numbers and the guy himself have said this is this is part of the problem. Carey Price is not having a Carey Price year, and when you make Carey Price money, you have to have a Carey Price year. You think if Matthews had 15 goals right now, we'd be going easy on him? No, <laughs> we'd be like, that's "What true. the hell was that about, yeah. man?" And that's an, and by most for most players, 15 goals, uh, you're on pace for about 30. That's that's a nice little season. It's not having. 11 million dollar year. Nope. And but here's the thing with Matthews: we'd be like, "What's either what's wrong with him, and or we expect him to bounce back next year." Carey Price is a guy that I expect to bounce back. I And I know he's a bit older, but I feel like he's going to be better next year. I really do. There are two goalies in the NHL who make 10 and up, and they're both over 30. Bobrovsky's the other one. It's dumb. It's not a good way to be. Like, I know Vasilevsky uh, signed his extension. I think it was 9.5. But, like, for me, it's okay because he's, like, what, 24, 25? Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, that's – I would expect him to bounce back for sure. You were, we're talking about a guy who's got X amount of NHL seasons under his belt already at, at an age where, like, most goalies are just breaking in. Carey Price and Sergei Bobrovsky, like, they're not getting better. I think if Carey Price can be 90% of what Carey Price was a couple years ago, they'll be fine. Post a 920. We don't need a 934 from Carey Price. We need a 920. He was so stupid good. He was. He was. That's, that is a no-win contract situation like it's it's just the perfect storm although you he have would, he does win because he gets that paycheck every week which well be nice. you see no but if you're mark bergevin you have hands down the best goalie in the world you do he's the best goalie not in anymore the world. no but at the time okay he had the best goalie in the world yep mm-hmm. and then he has a catastrophic injury a recurring really yep. bad injury you signed it a year ahead of time Oh, it's just it was just the perfect storm of awful. It was. It could have gone so good. Oh well. Uh, but it's it's he'd signed till he's thirty eight. So what do we expect for the next six years? And but if you look back in that time, right? Mm-hmm. And and so you're Mark you're you're Mark Bergevin at the time. Yeah. Yes, Carey Price had just posted a nine hundred, but you knew he was injured. You yeah. knew what the injury was. Even though he'd had four straight years of almost like nine thirty save percentage. What do you do? They didn't do protect you your trade? asset. You've just blown P.K. Subban out the door, and yep. it was a very unpopular trade. It's done well with time. It has done well with time. Yep. But what do you do with Carey Price? At that point, 17-18, what would you guys do? Would you let him play the last year of his deal? He had one more year left to go, and then sign him? Because here's the thing. What I would have done... What's he going to do, get more than 10? Well, that's my point. <laughs> I don't think that's he was going to. to. Yeah, he's not going to get more than what he got. The one no. smart thing that Lou so. Lamorello imparted i think onto the leafs organization there were many smart things but sure. if you have time use it yeah lula morello rarely if ever i've ever seen he's i've never seen him sign a wild contract except for the kovalchuk deal and 
when he signs players, it's because their contracts are up. A it's wild not a contract year for a con- star. He signs some really bad depth contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I mean is that he never signs a contract 12 months before it expires. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He doesn't do that. And he's like, if you have time, use it. Yeah. And I think you both nailed it right there. If Bergevin had waited and Price had played and he played well the next season, what's he going to get? 10-6? 10-7? He was like no. that. That was right around when Connor McDavid, I think, was getting ripped on for, you know, some people were going, well, he took a discount. And other people are going, you greedy bastard, $12.5 million. When he signed that deal, how many players were even making? I, I want to say it was like Kane and Taves. Who mm-hmm. else made over 10? I think it was just them. And he signed for 12, he signed for $2 million more. And he's the highest paid player by and 2 million bucks. And he's outplayed it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's so dumb good. He's, he's outplayed so, that. He's out, he outplays that contract every night. This is why I talk about the Oilers with such stress in my voice. I'm like, how do you miss the playoffs with that? Well, they're not with going to now. that mutant. I don't think they're going to miss playoffs this year. You don't think the Oilers will? I don't think so. I think they're, <clears throat> I think they're feeling pretty good about themselves. <clears throat> it's a tough one. It is. <clears throat> but Really look, shitty division. You know who I think might fall out good. of it? And they look good. I, you know who I think might fall out of it? Is, it and this is sad to me because I want them to make it as Arizona. Oh, that's that's a disaster. Well, right now, they could both make it. They could, both in. but I think I also think Winnipeg's going to make it, and and that means I think I think you're going to see Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, and Winnipeg in. Winnipeg makes it. They should really start considering Paul Maurice for the Jack Adams. Yes, <laughs> I agree. They're tied right now for that that second wild card spot with Vancouver. They have no defense. They have nobody. It's interesting that the Bufflin story went away. Even Completely. though we were supposed to get an update. And it was like, oh, this is the date. We got that the update. And then the date came and went, and there was no update. Mm-hmm. And everybody's just kind of not reporting. Is he even allowed to play? Something. Yeah. What? Yeah. Is he even allowed to play if we he comes know. back? We don't know. We have no answers. Uh, Justin Williams is back. Yeah. With the Carolina Hurricanes. Which is great. Good for him. Uh, yeah. I mean, it would have been interesting to see him become a Leaf. I just... I just, I think it would have been weird. To me, I'm I like... I would have liked it. Uh, g- give me something else. I need I need something else. Yeah, I think. Well, well and we'll get to that. Um, we haven't really talked about Toronto yet, but we don't need to yet because no. they haven't played. To, they don't play till later this afternoon. Tampa Bay has not lost a game since December twenty first. Unbelievable. <laughs> they are ten straight now. They Fire outs- John Cooper. They have outscored. Fire him. They have outscored their opponents in that time, forty three to nineteen. What? Yeah, including last night, one nothing win. And here's the thing: last night, they only allowed twenty three shots. And they this went a, all season with no shutouts, <clears throat> and I want to say either two of their last three or their last two, they have yeah. shutouts. This is a high-powered, insane offense, and oh, not really known defensively. They have great goaltending, and they do have great defensemen. But talk about locking a team down. Philadelphia is not a joke. They're a good team. They can and score. They can score. 23 shots? Wow. That's just over seven shots a period. <laughs> That's crazy low. Crazy low. So... Tampa, I mean, everybody's like, well, I'd rather see Tampa in the Leafs than Boston in the Leafs. You are you're out, out of your mind. You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. Um, I don't know what I'd rather see. I'd rather see neither. My therapist. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather, rather, see, rather see, my, see my therapist. You'd rather see Tampa? Tampa. It'd be fun. Oh. Tampa's never done it. No. They're in the same boat mm. as the Leafs. Why not take your chances with the inexperienced team that crapped out last year in the first round? This is the problem with, like, hoping the Leafs win the Cup is that... <sighs> There's a really good chance that their road there involves both of them. Is it going to be Tampa first and Boston second, or Boston first and Tampa second? Either way, it seems like it's going to have to be both of them. Right. It makes it more fun. It does make it more fun. Uh. It's Listen, we know if they ever do the thing, it's not going to be easy. No, it will be. It will have to be painful and awful mm-hmm. all the way up. All the way up the chain. It's, it's uh, Islanders in the conference final. Every game is wrestle frigging mania. For some reason right now... People a, bring live snakes. Jesse, you'll love this. Mm-hmm. For some reason right now, a tweet from November 21st, 2018 is going viral. Okay. It is from TSN. Uh, also known as the Trade Nylander ne- Network. <laughs> I couldn't spit that out. Trade Nylander Network for like three years. Toronto Sports Network. Uh, should the Leafs consider a Nylander facade trade? <laughs> Ooh! Is that what the tweet said? Yeah, hell yeah. And there was a video oh, on it gosh. too. And that was when I made my famous... The sod trade was a mistake, and people actually disagreed with me. Do you remember that? Way back? Yes. 
No, uh, because you called it <clears throat> the worst trade in the history of National Hockey. I said the worst <laughs> trade since Subban for uh, yeah, thing. that was the it turned example. out it it would have been better if I'd said Hall for Larson. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, awful trade, horrendous trade, and all the Hawks fans were like, "Whatever, he's going to sign here in two years anyway." Where's he playing now, guys? Right. Hawks, where's, he play, where's he playing? Where's uh, who's Panarin play for? Is it? Oh, who? is it? Who's I'm it? just wondering. No, I just wonder. I don't know. Third don't know. highest paid player in the league. Yeah, it's weird. It's crazy. Mm. Yeah, and mm. he's having a great season too. Yes, he is. Even though New York started really slow. Wow, really good. Um, Vancouver won last night. Six to three, but uh, forget the game. There's forget a tweet the Ooh. game. Not forget the game. I mean, obviously. Forget the game. There was, an, there was no real major storylines to come out of the game. Certain games that people play, like with Calgary and Edmonton, there's like major stories around it. Right. Vancouver won a, re- a really good game, and Vancouver yeah. played great. But Adam, forget the game. Let's talk about this. Dmitry Filipovich. Oh, baby. He's I bet been, he's not being cantankerous. Man, he was being, he was on, he's on fire this year. He said that was Louis Erickson's 36th goal with the Canucks, which now finally matches the 36 million he signed for four years ago. <gasps> he scored. Th- I didn't know this. That's his 36th goal in four years or three and a half. Wait, what? What is it? Read it again. That was Louis Erickson's 36th goal with the Canucks. Uh huh. Which now finally matches the 36 million he was signed for four years ago. Wow. <laughs> That's been a little bit of a disaster. It sure has. You know what? Louis oh. Erickson. Underrated? Just under. Hmm? <laughs> Ooh. Times, <laughs> they change. They... Time's such a bastard. It is. He, there was a time where he everyone's was... like, Louis Erickson, bro, I'm telling you. He's great. Well, he was traded for Sagan, played well in Boston. Mm-hmm. Like, played Problem well, is, that was like Dallas. 10 years ago. Yes. Yeah, we've talked about this before, but like, I remember... There was an all-star game when I worked at Leafs TV. I was either an intern or an employee, so it's only a difference of a year. And all the players, all of them, oh, Louis Erickson, most underrated player in the league. Man, that was a decade ago. He's not that anymore. Well, I remember there was that summer when the Leafs still had known as his GM. And I think... That was a great time. God, when was it? That we weren't convinced that the Shanahan era was going to turn things around because he wanted to retain Dave Boland. Mm-hmm. He wanted Boland and he wanted Josh Georges. Right. And Josh Georges refused to come to Toronto. Thank, Thank God. goodness. Yeah. Now, <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, what's interesting about all of that is um, uh, the that I believe that was the really bad free agent summer that everybody talks about. And who was the guy in, in Anaheim that had his scorching playoffs? Matt Bolesky. Do you remember? Oh. And I single-handedly started the campaign where it was like, please do not sign Matt Bolesky. He's going to fall off a cliff. And, and he think... signed in Boston. And, of and course, didn't they already have Clarkson? And it was like, exactly. oh, hey, we're going to just replicate this mistake the next year. <laughs> yes. And, because Are you out of your mind? It's like, <laughs> Here's a guy with like 40 goals and two assists. Shows how much he drives play. Mm. Right? Mm. You don't even need to look at it. Anyway, um... Boston, of course, he signs in, and it doesn't affect them at all, negatively at all. No, he was in the minors by, like, the next season. Yeah, crazy. I want to say he's a ranger. I think he's a member of the Wolf Pack, like the Hartford Wolf Pack. Is he? I think so. He's in the minors somewhere. No, he's making his money. Good now, for him. Can, can, I things- read, can I read a piece from thecomeback.com? Uh-oh. Read it. What's Sam the- Blazer. Wrote on May fifteenth, Hell yeah. 20, Sam Blazer. Sam Blazer. Wrote on May fifteenth, two thousand five, or twenty fifteen. Ah. He wrote, "A player who's improving his stock much more than anyone else with each game played is Anaheim Ducks winner Matt Bolesky. While having a strong regular season will most certainly help his case, this postseason may just end up putting him over the top as slam dunk free agent this summer." I'm gonna just scroll a little. Beware the hot playoff guy. Yes, yes. People have been worried about the proper value of Matt Bolesky after he broke out with 22 goals and 10 assists this regular season. But as a regular listener of the Steve Dangle podcast, I've heard multiple times from their host, Adam Wild, about how he believes Bolesky is only a player having a career year and will have a pass similar to David Clarkson after his signing with the Leafs. Is this real? Delving a little deeper, we can see just how similar they are almost to a start, uh, startling degree at times. This is, yeah, it's an article from 2015. from uh, Who wrote that? From Mr. Sam Blazer. Wow. Sam Blazer! Blade. And then Blazer. he goes on to compare... Blazer. What? 
he goes on to compare uh, Clarkson and Matt Bolesky and how their careers are very similar. There you go. I wonder if you're still listening, Sam. I Hi, appreciate Sam. the shout out. No, yeah. we probably pissed him off at some point. How did point. you find that? I Googled Matt Bolesky Steve Dangle podcast. Uh, well, really? Yes. And of course it was Adam. There it is. Friggin' Adam. Uh, <laughs> one of the major stories to come out of. Um, Come out of headlines last night, and headlines is always an unmissable segment. It's the best. Like, I knew I would fall asleep midway through the game because I've been sick. I set my alarm for like nine o'clock just to make sure that I could watch it. Man, it, headlines unmissable second intermission. But I tell you what, a lot of people, oh, what the hell is going to go on with first intermission now? The coach's corner is gone. You know who's been carrying a lot of that load? Christine Simpson, man. Mm. All her features, all her interviews, she's so good at her job. One of the most underrated people at the network. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but sorry. What were and you unlike say? Louis Erickson, will still be underrated. Well, it could still be great in 10 years. Nope, now she's overrated. Shoot. <laughs> Darn, I ruined it. I ruined it. Sorry, and, uh, Christine. Uh, also, hometown hockey was in Vaughn, was it not? It's in Vaughn tonight. Yes. Tonight, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Coburg last, and I think Chris Johnson, I think he had a heart attack in excitement. Like he was <laughs> oh, <yeah>. just, just <laughs> loves... <laughs> I don't know. Listen, the next time we have him on, and don't tell him you're going to do this, count the Coburg references, okay? Mm. Okay. There's a, there's like, I, I think there's like a Coburg. we got to play a Coburg, have a graphic. Coburg shot games. Yeah. Put yeah. it right over his face. For sure. <laughs> One Coburg. I may lead him down that path a couple times. But, um, count Berg. Nope, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. <laughs> uh, the Rangers, Willis, and offers on Georgiev, yeah. which is what we thought anyway. But here's the ask, and this is where it gets really interesting. It will probably cost you a forward, according to Elliot Freeman, who's either as young, who's really young, or either ready to play or close to it. They won't listen to anything that doesn't impress them beneath that. They don't need defensive prospects. They don't need goaltending prospects. They need young, good forwards. Weird. What team do you know mm. with a plethora of young, good forwards? Uh, mm. The Edmonton Maple Leafs. <laughs> the Toronto Maple Leafs. Damn it. And so immediately my wheels start turning. Who is that? Who could that be? How close, because I don't think this gets it done, but how close is Jeremy Bracco to getting that deal done? I don't think close at all. No. Okay. I think you need an established NHL player. Georgiev's played games. No, what were the words, though? What were the words? No. A, a forward who's either as he, who's either young or either ready to play or close to it. And young and re- and sorry, it says... It's weirdly worded. It will probably cost you a forward who's either as young and either ready to play or close to it. I think he misspoke when they directly quoted him. But essentially that young and ready wrong. to play or close to it. Yeah. Jeremy Bracco's not that guy. No. It'd have to be Bracco plus, I would think. Could you give several guys? <laughs> Are you... Would you... Mm. I, I, I kind of think Kapanen might be too much. No. I do too. But, but then also the cap hit... Right. You're relieved of the Kapanen hit. I look they... at Kapanen as the piece. <clears throat> it's expendable. It's somebody who they will be able to plug in the lineup. He seems like a perfect fit. Well, also, I got a question about that. There's something there? Yeah. I got a question about that. Because the Leafs, it's funny. If, you, if you'd pitched me the Colorado trade with Kadri, mm-hmm. I'd be like, how are the Leafs getting Kerfoot and Barry? That surprised right? me. Right? That, and like, they're retaining half on yeah, Barry? Yeah. Right. Like, how, do they, how do they do how did they manage that? It was a steal. It, I think it was. I think it was a great deal for both sides. I really do. And it's, I think Dubas is a good negotiator when yeah. it comes to that stuff. I, listen, I miss Naz too. They did yeah. pretty well in that deal. Oh, oh yeah, a hundred percent. No one's going to argue that. Um, Georgiev's in the last year of his deal. He's twenty three years old, so he's going to be an RFA. So what's he? He's a two million dollar goaltender, maybe next year. It's tough. I don't think he can ask for a ton. No, he can't. He can't. Something. Like, yeah, I, I think right, right, right around right. what you said. My question is, if you're trading Kapanen, are you trading a strength to address a weakness? Because this is the problem. We, because what you need to do in this position is you need to s- trade from a positional strength, but I wouldn't say skill strength. And what The difference I'm, I'm making here is, and I think this is where Jeremy Bracco comes in, Kapanen is a member of the Leafs lineup, right? Mm-hmm. Right now. And has not had the best year, but he's been bumped around, and they traded, changed head coach, whatever, and he's still been pretty good. Right. When I look at what he's brought, like the guy is, I don't know if people know this or not, but he's fifth in team scoring. Kapanen. Yeah. He's, I don't think. He's had a tremendously, a, a genuinely, and we throw this word around <clears throat> a lot, he's had an underrated season. I don't. He's always a lightning rod for criticism, and mm-hmm. he has consistently put, put up points. I don't think it's fair 
And that, played on the penalty kill. That K- Kasperi Kapanen, who is behind Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Tavares, and ahead of Morgan Riley, but Morgan Riley's a defenseman, but still, uh, in points, I don't think it's a fair trade for him to go for Georgiev. And whenever he do, was in the top six, he was in the meat grinder role. And so he's been doing, he's been having most of his success third line right wing. What if I tell you it's Chris Kreider and Georgiev for Kapanen plus maybe a pick? It's a, it's a lot more than that, I think. And then Chris more Kreider? From, from you get, the you Rangers? Get, you get 20 yeah, minutes oh, yeah. of Chris Kreider, basically, right? You get, you get like. Him and then he's on off to free agency, isn't he? Probably. Yeah, you're, he's a UFA, but that's and all you need. Chris Kreider might be. How because far of, back are the Rangers now? Because they were real. They were right in it for a bit, and then they, they are. They're still right in it. Like I think they're no. They're, they are forty six points, and uh, Philly sitting with fifty two in the second wild card, but they're behind one two other teams. So eh, Rangers are in. They're in a wicked position where they have these guys. They can move if they want. They can keep them if they want for the playoffs. They're rebuilding, but they don't have to be rebuilding. Like a lot sure. of the pieces are already there. But you look at, you just look, you're going to get one of their UFAs. It's either Fast, Kreider, or you go down the line. It's like Greg McKegg's not going to get it done. No. So it's it's Kreider or Fast, and I don't mind Chris Kreider and Gergiev for Captain. No, of course you don't. No, Chris Kreider like, would be amazing. Rangers fans would Kre- shit themselves. Kreider is <clears throat> better than Captain. Yeah. So. But what you have is Kapanen cost controlled for a few more years, and Kreider yeah. in four years is not going to be better than Kasparov. And that Kapanen. is worth something. Yeah. Well, I don't look at Kreider as somebody who's on the Leafs past the, uh, the playoff run. Probably not. I would really like Chris Kreider to be a Leaf. Yeah. Here's the here's, there's something there. But that's why I didn't bring up Kapanen, the guy who they've been missing since Babcock was fired. Name the player. Since Babcock was fired, well, they haven't had Trevor Moore the whole time. Not the guy I'm talking about. Who are you talking about? Keep thinking. Well, Jake Muzzin's out, nope. but they had him for a bit. Not him. Soup was there. Nope. Not. For a bit. Nope. Oh, yeah. Andreas Janssen basically hasn't played under Keefe. Andreas Janssen. That's so you think he's part of the deal. So I think Andreas Janssen is what the Leafs give. And I I, I think, even with Mikheyev out, if Mikheyev's ready for the playoffs and you're laughing, it's great. I don't think he plays again this season. McKev? Yeah. I think. Well, God, I hope he does. Yeah, it's funny. I, I, uh, I think he will. Hopefully. I think he will because it's you... really it's a cut, right? And I think that yeah. I don't know. It depends on what the what tendons happen. Like right. What we're, we're severed, so we'll yeah. see. His shot for the rest of the season will be useless. <clears throat> yes, but it was never good anyway. He never had a good shot. No. So he he, a it'll it'll be a, a a true defensive role. Right. Up front, which is great. Which is. That's primarily what he was used for. I think we've seen the best of Andreas Janssen already. Any oh, playoff MVP, but again, it's the minors. It's not the same. I think Andreas Janssen is the piece. And I think they bring him back. He's going to play great. I think Adam's right. But I think Andreas yeah. Janssen is the piece. That's the guy I'd go. Now, I don't know what I don't know what New York's expecting in terms of like he's Andreas a good Janssen I is like the him. depth. Yeah, he's a but, he is. But also, I look at the way Pierre Engvall stepped in, mm-hmm. uh, and the way like the Pierre Engvall for me is the piece, right? If Pierre Engvall hadn't stepped up, I wouldn't be saying this. Right. But Pierre Engvall's a guy that I'm like, oh, I, I think I don't, I don't know if Pierre Engvall becomes Andreas Janssen, but I think he might. He looks like it. And Kills penalties, whereas Janssen, they sort of had him doing that for a while, mm-hmm. and sometimes he would be like the third rotation that Keith likes to use. Yep. Um, Yep. No, not really. If Engvall played every game, Engvall would be scoring at around a 50-point pace. With zero power play time. And that's... None. And Andreas Janssen's on the power play. Mm-hmm. So I think I think your your asset is 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 um, is Andreas Janssen. And I think he is a valuable piece. Like, you know, in Toronto, we haven't seen him play in a while, and... But he was he's he's a great player, great guy. All the other things, he's on a cost control deal. Uh, not that that matters in New York, but you want to have those depth, those second and third line guys. The cap makes can it put matter. Up Fifty points, it does yeah. matter. And and when we were talking about Kapanen, so right away I start making my fake roster in my head. I will, okay, I don't got to worry about the top six on the mm-hmm. right side forever. So there's Neil Ander Marner done. Okay, now who's who's our fourth line right wing? Because he's probably going to get bumped up. Oh, it's Goat. Huh. All right. Well, that's not going to happen. Okay, we can't do that. Then I go to the left. 
Hyman. Mm-hmm. He's got a permanent spot in the top six there. Yep. Engvall is definitely going to evolve hey, to Engvall be that Mikheyev, guy. Engvall Mikheyev, right? Yeah. Well, and they got Kerfoot there well, now. Yeah, it, I was going to say Kerfoot. In, in yeah, Kerfoot's peace, been great. Work. Yeah, he has been, but I think for this team to have playoff success, he's got to be at center. Kerfoot? I don't I don't like Spets as the third C. I think it's too high for him. Going into Sparingly, this year's playoffs, but, you're going to break out Kerfoot, Tavares, Nylander? No. You're not. Coach, you know why? Coach Steve Dangle is. It's a tough Here's, decision because I think Janssen, Tavares, Nylander could be special. Yeah, but one has already proven to be special. Yeah. See, Bergie said something interesting. Mm-hmm. He said there are a lot of teams out there with one, like I think he used killer line, and mm-hmm. he said one line that's pretty good. He said the Leafs have two lines that are killers, absolute killers right now. Yeah. And he said that is more than most teams, most of the best teams that even win the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. And so I think when you're looking at the third line, you got to stop looking at it in terms of the way Babcock did, where or like Barry Trotz does, where it's like five minutes left, we're down by three goals. I'm going to put on my fourth line guys. He's going to roll his killers. He's not. Gonna, he's going to roll his killers. And and I think I don't I don't mind Spets at 14, 15 minutes. I don't, especially That's when fine. You, when you look at okay, if Matthews. Matthews has been playing since since Keith took over twenty three minutes a game, and he basically does he does not use his fourth line. No, and 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 then in you games got, where they're losing, Tavares has been at twenty one twenty two minutes. Mm-hmm. So I like Brooks. No, I know, but but look oh, at those, just those two together. Twenty one plus twenty three. Mm-hmm. What's that? Oh boy, Adam, why'd you do that? Forty four. Forty four minutes out of a possible sixty, which leaves sixteen minutes. Right, that's so, math. So that means that you can play Spezza for ten, and then your fourth liner for four. Or sorry, six. Or you can play Spencer for twelve and your fourth line setter for four. That's probably closer to the. That's truth. that's what I'm saying. And I think some of the offensive plays that Spets has made this year have been amazing. Yeah, it defensively he drives me nuts, but does All win right. a shitload of faceoffs and he's a gifted offensive player. So. I just, Steve, I'm going to hand you a clipboard and a white and a erase marker. A okay. Erase board marker. You're setting the lineup. Are you breaking up that line now that Adams convinced you that Kerfoot should be on the top line? Okay, is everyone healthy? Yes. Yeah, let's just say we're, we're doing the roster going into the playoffs. But my, what I love is that every team gets healthy going into the playoffs. Right. right? Oh. Wow, we're magically no, healthy no, again. No, no, I'm not going to play with a broken crazy. leg. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> How is Eric Carlson ready to go? Oh, magic. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't break up Hyman, Matthews, Marner. Nope. Let's keep Kerfoot, Tavares, Nylander together for now. So, Adam has changed your mind. No, no. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm figuring out what it could be <laughs> yes, with what it is. Yes. You yes, know what I mean? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, where does Janssen fit? This is my point. And wouldn't you rather go into the playoffs with Matthews, uh, Tavares, Spezza as your top three centers than Frederick Anderson mm-hmm. and Michael Hutchinson? And you can use GOAT on as fourth no, C. No, no, no. You can Frederick use Frederick Anderson, Michael Hutchinson. Frederick Anderson goes down. Then tell me what you're what you're thinking about. I would much. I'll take a Georgiev, especially given the games he's played against the Leafs. He's been unbelievable. With Hutch as the starter, in a God forbid scenario, they might win a playoff game. They're not winning a playoff They're not series. Winning a series. Adam might have it. I and think he, that's a you, tough trade for that organization to make. And you know, the Leafs have to rest Anderson going down the stretch, and right. they are still in a battle. They're still in a battle. They lose tonight. They're one point up on a playoff spot. That's right. So Fuck. this is the point. The Leafs have to make a deal. I think the Leafs have to go after Georgiev. Um, I think it's it's incumbent on them. This is one of those things like it's more important than the right-handed shot defenseman debate ever was. This is. You haven't, this is the. This will be their make or break this year. You haven't changed your mind on Hutch at all? Like past no. couple games? No. No? Mm-mm. Listen, man. The guy can play at the NHL level. He was playing badly at the NHL level, and the Leafs were playing badly. Sure, in front of him. But you just said it right there. You I don't have think they a want to goaltender a who you cannot win a series with. I think Georgiev could. I think he could too. So why? I don't okay, think it's likely, but but you yeah, expect that people are going to get injured. Like, look at what happened with Pittsburgh. Look at what happened with Washington. They pulled Holtby out. Put Grubauer, or no, yeah, they pulled Hopi out during the stretch so Grubauer could play. Grubauer was Grubauer the lost, starter when they began that cup run. They lost two straight games. We're like, okay, I guess we'll put Hopi back in. We'll mm-hmm. see where this goes. And they won. And that has happened a startling amount of times. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I remember Brzezgalov was the Ducks starter um, in 07, I think, when they won. Yeah. 
Um, uh, and then friggin' Jaguar was Jaguar. Yeah, this it's is, it's happened a lot of times, man. The Leafs, Murray and Flurry. I don't care what anyone says about the defense. I think the defense looks better. I yes. think I think the I think the reason the defense looks better is because this team is finally playing the way it should. The Leafs need to make a deal. I think Georgiev's the guy. That's just my personal opinion. I don't, you know, I know as much about goaltending as the next guy, which isn't much because who knows anything about NHL goaltending? It's a weird thing. But if I know that here's the here's the thing with Georgiev too. We have guys. How many more years until Freddie Anderson is up? Yeah. And when Two. Freddie Anderson is up, he's going to be in demand. He is phenomenal. Are you going to want to pay 31 or 32-year-old Freddie Anderson? We're going to be in the same position as the teams we just criticized. Yeah. There's no reason the Leafs should oh, sign boy. Freddie Anderson after this contract. That's what I, I've There's said that this summer. Absolutely no reason. And they have goaltending prospects coming up, but none they're, of those they're guys are ways away. None right. of those guys are even ready for the AHL. No, and there was the the TSN top five prospects that that came out. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought they did a really good job until they named Ian Scott number five. Hmm. What? I have debate as to whether or not he's even their best goalie prospect, but the dude's got an injury that's going to keep him out until training camp. So by the time next season begins, he will have not played hockey for a year. That guy's not the Leafs' fifth best prospect right now. Well, I mean, I think if you're going to pick a goalie, it'd have to be Joseph Wall. Yeah, and I wouldn't put him. F- I don't know if I wouldn't put, put him, him fifth. five. No. no. So there are answers there. Uh, b- uh, stop asking me, by the way, about the KHL dude. That is magic beans. Has that even? Have they even signed that guy yet? No, I don't think. No. I don't know if they're going to, and if they do, I don't think he's a magical fix-all, dude. KHL goalies stop. You're a bum if you stop ninety-two percent of your shots mm. in the KHL, and like that's Vesna numbers over here. It's just different, and you can't. Also, how big is that guy? Problem what is, is I, his name. I want to say Ilya. I remember Alvis Kalnich. Uh, I think he's on earlier. Akbar's Kazan. If you can look yeah, them up, yeah, he is. He is. AK Bar's Kazan. Um. He's short, if I remember correct, and just That's not what's working in the NHL right now. Yeah, and that it's unfair at every other position because it's it's funny every other position is getting smaller. Goalies need to be able to take up more and more of the net. They do, dude. Bernier, Anderson. Bernier. I I don't think scouts were wrong on Bernier. I think they read where the league was going wrong. Yeah, I think Bernier. He's if he NHL played goalie. five six years before he did, would have been a monster. And he had a couple good seasons, mm-hmm. but it's too small. I don't know how to pronounce it. Timur. Timur. Uh, Bilyalov. Bilyalov. I don't know. Bilyalov. Timur. It was either Toronto or Montreal he was going to sign with. We just haven't heard who. Yeah. And, like, it's it's like what I said about, um, I think, Eric Comrie. Like, sure, I like having him in the system, but, like, that's not a needle mover at the NHL level. Or you, or you can't bank on him. Right. And it's I a magic think, bean. It's like uh, signing on Roth. And don't you want a guy with, I think, the Sorry. skill set that Georgiev has to be around a guy Proven. Like, proven skill set. That don't you want him around Freddie Anderson, who is cold as ice? Yeah. Well, who is, and, like, ice cold in his veins. And he's learned from Lundqvist already. Yeah. Like, talk about great exposure to great goalies. Come right. on. Yeah, really good, really good. And and, and I I don't know. I just don't think. I think you take your chances, and I think we've seen. And this is going to be an unpopular opinion with a lot of Leaf fans. I think we've seen, despite the injuries, the best that Andreas Janssen has to offer. I think we saw it last year. I don't think Andreas Janssen is much more than what we saw, which is still a very very good NHL player. And the fact that he was selected in the seventh round is insanity. But yeah. I still I think there are guys in the lineup who can replace him at a cheaper price right now, and they're playing, and their name is Pierre Engvall. But and it's, I think it's also going to take more than Janssen. Right? I think it will be Janssen, just Janssen, Janssen plus something. Because here's the thing, Georgiev's not like it's not like he's the he's not. I don't want to give up much more than that. It's still at the end of the day, it's the backup. Sure, you know what I mean. Like yeah. he's yeah. you're talking about a guy who's going to play. Would you do Janssen in a fourth? No, I think I think it's just straight up. But what if that what what if that was the I'm deal I'm giving you, I'm like, giving you hold on to this or it's Janssen the fourth. Which I'm giving you a quality NHL player at a position of weakness uh, with control. Mm-hmm. And I say, and and I'm getting a backup goalie with an expiring contract. And I say no, I'm not going to do this unless I get a fourth. Are you ba- are you backing out? 
I now you're asking me on... for a dollar. Yeah. I think it depends on how up against the wall you believe yeah. you are if you're the Leafs. And I think when I look at Georgiev's stats right now, I've pulled them up. You know, his, his best save percentage was his first year in 17, 18. He only played 10 games. This guy has never played more than, 30 ga- or more than 35 games at the NHL level. Like, he's 63 total, but in one season. <laughs> also, he's, is he hurt? He has been this year, I believe. Because, well, like there his was... numbers this year are not sterling. His, so... his, his goals against average this year is a 317, guys. He... And I know that's not the be all end all stat. His save percentage is below average, 909. He had great. that he had that ridiculously bad game against the Oilers, mm-hmm. where the Oilers were up, I think, six nothing, and they ended up winning mm-hmm. seven five. Um, Georgiev uh, smashed his stick on the goalpost. Then, if you go watch the replay, he like held his hand after. That's yeah. his blocker hand. Oh, he's there. He, he was been hurt. Yeah. Oh boy. So the other thing, Jesse, is is if you said that to me, I would say I'm giving you a proven guy who can score 45 points at the NHL. Ew. You're giving me a guy. You've already you've already said all that stuff. What right. if I said if, if you then, want to then do I this deal. go find a better deal? Yeah, I think no, we're okay. right. and then, yeah. then then there's no deal to be had. You don't no, have okay. the only goalie. Okay. Yeah, there are other go- there are other players, other teams with good goalies that would be more than happy. I think. I think. But um, I think Georgiev just seems like that's a guy I'd place a bet on. That's just me. Now another and, thing, and if you trade Janssen, you can afford a more expensive goalie. Hmm. Yeah, you can. Uh, sharks don't think it's over. I the sharks mean... are not going to move anyone from their core. They will listen to offers on Brendan Dillon, who apparently the Leafs are in on. And what? I, yeah, I don't. I don't hear that at all. Um, and Melker Carlson, who is the least good of the three Carlsons in the league, but uh, <laughs> of the three Carlsons, Melker's the last guy I'd want. But uh, um, sorry, that caught me off guard. Brendan Dillon. I think I think the the Leafs apparently called on Brendan Dillon, quote unquote. I think the reason that that made it into the piece was because um, it it adds validity to the statement that they'd listen to Brendan Dillon and they're trying to up the value on Brendan Dillon. Brendan Dillon's not a Leaf, I don't think. I don't think in the system that they're currently playing. But no. let me. But the bigger question I have for you guys is: Are the Sharks in denial? Or can they actually come back and be great next year if they figure out the goaltending thing? They well, no, they have some serious flaws. But if you're the Sharks, you're they are very much built to win now. Mm-hmm. They're a hundred percent built to win now. Um, for them to be in the position that they're in right now is embarrassing. And I think it's on them to get a goalie, uh, not necessarily because they don't believe it's done, but because you gotta. You need to find an answer to what the problem is. And what's the problem? That they cannot stop eight pucks a game from going into their net. Right. People talk about the Leafs being bad. Holy shit. Yeah, that's bad defense and bad goaltending. Yes. bad goaltending. Now, you can survive with bad defense if they score a lot and you have a good goalie. Mm -hmm. They don't have a good goalie. Aaron Dell has, like, stolen Martin Jones' job, and he hasn't been doing great either. So... I think the Sharks management group owes it to themselves, to the hard work that they've done to assemble the team that they have, to go out and get a goalie, mm. see if that's the issue. If that fixes it, wonderful. I guess your job's done. If it doesn't fix it, now you have no excuse not to move off of parts. Because now you know you have conclusive proof your team's garbage. You go out there and you get a goalie who can actually stop pucks, and they stop them. Wonderful. Jesse, what if, do you think? If they can't, you're garbage. I think it's also a, just a thing you say when you have a locker room full of guys that you're trying to motivate. Like, I don't think you can publicly say at this point in the season, hey, we're going to start trading off assets when you're the Sharks and you've gone all in with this group of veterans who haven't really won anything And yet. you don't have a first. And yeah. you don't have a first-round pick. I think just to save face, at least, you have to say, hey, we're not giving up and we're going to trade some guys mm-hmm. and get, some, get you guys some help. I got to tell you something. I think the Sharks are in complete denial. Yeah, I think it's complete. I think it's the wrong thing at all. I think you should start trading n- yesterday. Yes, but I think they have to say this to themselves just because they are in yeah. denial. True. Does Joe Thornton want a cup? I think Joe Thornton's happy in San Jose. Okay. Okay. Remember all the judging we did of Shane Doan uh, when he didn't want to get traded out of Arizona his final year there? Because no, Shane. Uh, no, that was different. <laughs> Why Shane, was it different? <laughs> Shane Doan was like, I want to win a cup in Arizona. Like, okay, yeah. man, well, oh. that's not going to happen. Okay, so but if what if, is it? When it, Okay, I don't know if Thornton's done, so this is different. I don't think he is. Okay, if he's not, fine, whatever, stay in San Jose. And honestly, next year, 
they're they're one of those weird teams that could have a terrible year, make and a couple moves and be, and be fine. Yep. yep. So fine. But if we know Joe Thornton's at the end mm-hmm. and he doesn't ask for a trade, if he doesn't actually try to win this, I got no sympathy. Well, no, but I I, I think that the, the pro, I think the Shane Doan situation was different because he bitched and whined about all of the the players that Arizona was trading away when they were trying to get better, mm-hmm. and they couldn't trade him because they were trying to because he wanted to stay and he was the captain, and they were trying to get better and they were trading Nagy yeah. and all these other guys for for <sighs> remember yeah this is this is not to sound disrespectful but like you're. Uh, earlier when you were talking about the Oilers, you're like, oh, they should be thinking about it this way. They should be, Adam, you are grossly overestimating the critical thinking going on in NHL locker rooms. I understand that, <laughs> and I'm not expecting that. But the criticism for Shane Doan was he bitched and wanted to complain when his friends got traded yeah. when they underperformed. Yeah, The Shane when Doan they, conversation was a different conversation. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, like like Joe Thornton is not saying anything. He's like, I want to be a shark. Mm-hmm. Joe Thornton is not out there going, I want to win a Stanley Cup. He's saying, I want to be a Shark. I'm sure he wants to win a Stanley Cup. Of course. But I, but he's got, Came close. He's got 19 points in 47 games this year. He might be done. Ooh. But, but okay, so that, more, okay, that's part of the problem territory. Marlowe and Thornton. Well, Marlowe's got eight goals this year. Isn't that, it's not bad. He's just not been, you know. For the amount of money he's for seven hundred grand, That's not bad. That's not a bad purchase. Here's my issue. Beyond the Eric Carlson paid... Paid the sum of money of God <laughs> until until Jesus returns. Literally, like his he's Eric Carlson will still be making eleven and a half million dollars in twenty five twenty six. Oh, twenty six twenty seven. Yeah, twenty six. Well, yeah, cap friendly ends and it keeps going. And he's no. basically RoboCop. My big pr- issue with the way San Jose is set up is Mark Edward Vlasic. That deal. They have so many. Bad, 32 bad deals. years old, Vlasic will still be signed and making seven million bucks a year till 25 26. And I don't know how uh, no, but well, Logan th- Couture too signed to 20 yeah. till 2027. But be all those contracts yeah. or 36, all those contracts, we don't discuss them like the Kings. We look at and we go, Yeah, you did some dumb contracts, but whatever. You got two cups in three years. I get it, mm-hmm. I get why you did it. The Sharks are in that territory. Where they signed those deals so that they could win now, exactly now. I think now. now was two years ago, though. Yeah, two years ago, last year, now, and even next year, I would say. And then after that, you're really pushing it. I I don't know why they haven't been more aggressive. Have they made a trade this year? What are they going to make a trade for? Who are they going to trade? Yeah, this is like, what are you going to do? They don't that's, have any. Their, that's their problem. Like, they don't even have their first round pick for this year. I oh, know. What are you going to do? Trade your, your next year first round pick? If, oh. if you are smart. If you are smart. Should have held on to Mike Hoffman. Should have held on to Mike Hoffman. Um, if you were going to go for it, you 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 signed Joe Pavelski for three more years. Um, you know, if you were going to go old and crazy, you may as well have kept Pavelski because you're missing that. And I think, I think. Keep Sharks, Pavelski at uh, the cost of losing Carlson and you bring in a cheaper defender who can move? Yes. Yeah. No, no, it's and just you, funny looking at a roster with two 40-year-olds. Yeah. You know? Oh my and God. Carlson playing like one. Like, I, right. like, I hate to say this. Like, I and mean, there'll be a bunch of San Jose Shark fans who are like, he looks great. Okay. But, like, you've seen him not, not pivot on that one foot, right? It's the left foot. Right. You've seen how he can. Guys, like, I, I get what you're saying. But the San Jose Sharks have enormous cap trouble. And it's their, their, their general manager deserves all the credit in the world and deserves. The chance to undo some of this. They've got good deals. Evander Kane's not a bad deal. Timo Meyer's a good deal. Thomas Hurdle's a good deal. Timo Meyer's a great deal. They're like really good. Like good Eric, stuff. Eric Carlson's so good. We're talking about him like he's a washed up bum. He's got 34 points in 46 games. Yeah. But the criticism is not. It's not this year. Is not the, is the point first, totals. The first year of the deal. The deal was signed in July. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it just got started. And they didn't have to sign it. He hasn't played 82 games since 15, 16. Well, 82 is a lot. 82 is a lot. Okay, fine. He hasn't played Does over play 70 in, in, well, I guess only two years. It's not that long. But yeah. it's long enough, man. It's a trend. I don't know. I just it's a trend, think, man. I think San Jose's dreaming. And I think even if they have a good goalie, they make it into the. They make it in the first round, and then what? Yeah. And even last year, man, 16 points in 19 playoff games. Freaking guy puts up points. The points is never the point, though. It's uh-huh. what else? Like, 
you've seen what happens when people go, yeah, I'm going to go left on you. Right. And he goes, yep, you are. They need to get a specialist for him to play with. I don't know who his partner has been. I don't know. Brent Burns is having a good year, too. Offensively. Offensively. Can you trade Martin Jones for anything? No. No. And that deal sucks. That <laughs> five, deal. 5 to 23-24. You, you can only trade him. It would have to be like a Neil Lucic thing where yeah. you're going, here, let's trade each other our big old piles of nothing. Yeah, here's and my sucky works. goalie for your sucky goalie. If and I, what's funny is it's kind of worked. Yeah. If I'd known Calgary was going to trade James Neal, I would have traded Martin Jones to Calgary because at least they could have used a goalie, right? Yeah. And James Neal could score some goals and would have been looked good in San Jose, I think. That would have been a good deal. Mm-hmm. It would have been it's a fair bad, one. Yeah. But I think they needed to make sure that Martin Jones was going to suck. And you know what? I also wonder this. And now Aaron Dell's your savior. Yeah. I wonder this about... <laughs> and a Brendan Dillon deal. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Man, by the way, that guy makes $3.3 million, and he has 11 points. Yeah. yeah, no, I he's, mean, not, he's not going to the Leafs. But my question, guys. He's big. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's neat. The whole point, what? The whole point here is <laughs> I wonder if you look at San Jose and you go, okay, so they have, like, who who else has got a bad contract on their books that All could, right. could trade? You got Louis Erickson in Vancouver. That's a legit, like, we're talking legitimately bad contracts now. Martin Jones has underperformed for two years. Is Martin Jones... A goaltending coach away from being Martin Jones again. Potentially. Like if you look at the resurgence of Semyon Varlamov in yep. with the Islanders. That was one res- I didn't expect. And the right. resurgence but the year before of Robin Lanner with it's Steve Briere, isn't it? No, he's so I think I screwed that up. I think he's still with the Leafs. Who's the guy who he was the Marley's coach or something? There's somebody from the Leafs there that's coaching goaltending. Oh, I can't remember. In the, on the island? On the Islanders yeah, that yeah. Lou brought with him, which oh, was really smart. Up. Yeah. Like I wonder if you can get a, the right goaltending coach in there, because I'd be getting rid of whoever the goaltending coach is. Mm-hmm. Um then Mitch Corn. Mitch Horn. Corn. It's it just it doesn't make sense because they keep saying they're trying to win, but they have to sell off guys who aren't performing. Which isn't what teams who are going for it have to do. No. So the two things don't line up. Because, like, how am I supposed to sell off this asset and get something in return so I can win now if I'm selling off a bad asset and nobody wants it? Right. So, okay. So Mitch Korn is the uh, director of goaltending for the Islanders. The guy the Leafs lost to the Islanders was Piero Greco. Okay. That's that's why I screwed that up. Yeah, Steve Breer is still the Leafs guy. Okay. Are you a good goaltending coach away? I wonder. Maybe. But, I mean, there have been people that are writing for years. Um, I think Kat Silverman had an article a couple years ago about Martin Jones and the enormous ho- gaps in his game. And this is before his save percentage took a, you know, jump yeah. off a cliff. So I didn't know he was this bad, though. Like, you can be a no. flawed goalie and be okay. But that's the thing is that, like, he's got a really good team in front of him. So there's no They're excuse. horrible defensively. The chances they allow are stunning. Yeah, but again, now now we're looking at a team that is just as fascinating to me, if not more, than the St. Louis Blues of last year. Interesting. Where I look at them and I go, "What is going on here?" And the answer last year was very literally a goalie, <laughs> yeah, and the and the coach, yeah, it was goalie and the coach. Sharks have already fired the coach, yeah, and tried nothing new with the goalie other than giving Aaron Dell a little bit more. So, and I think they fired a good coach. Yeah. I was not a fan. That was Hines, right? No. Uh, they fired uh, Pete DeBoer, and now they DeBoer. got Bob, Bob Bugner back there. Bob Bugner's a good coach, too. He was the coach of the Spitz when they were winning Memorial Cups I all think, the time. I think Pete DeBoer, sorry, I think both John Hines and Pete DeBoer, I know Devils fans are going to hate me for this. I think John Hines is a good coach, and I think Pete DeBoer is a good coach, too. I think they're <laughs> they're new age guys. I think they're, they're a lot better than what they've been given credit for. Those are two coaches there. If I'm like, if, if I'm looking at, if I'm, didn't Nashville? Who did they just hire? John Hines. Yeah, and, and there's a reason why. And look at that! Not only uh, people were making fun of me. I made a Voldemort joke uh, b- about John Hines because yeah. I think he looks that, that way. And I said, "Well, he has a goalie," and people took that very seriously. And within my Voldemort joke, he's got a goalie. Pecorino scored a goal. That goalie's scoring goals. Give him the Vesna. John Hines is a miracle worker. <laughs> Sheldon Keefe, who? You're wrong. Yeah. I'd, I don't know. That that team is just as fascinating as the Blues. They are. They I don't know. Listen, I would love the Leafs to go out and get a really good backup goalie, a guy who can be like a a 1A 
like he's 1A quality anyway, mm -hmm. who could win you a playoff series if he had to. Mm -hmm. I would love that. But when I saw Georgiev was available, I'm like, the, the number one team should be the Sharks. The Sharks don't have what they need. The Sharks don't have a good young forward to give yeah. up. The Sharks have a bunch of guys who are 26 plus. Unless you're trading Hurdle or Meyer. Which they're not. You're not. The the Sharks do have an interesting trade chip. The trouble is its value, and I don't think it provides any value to the Rangers, unfortunately. Uh, Merkley. Yeah, I know. He's a defenseman. The Rangers aren't yeah, interested. No. Well, he's a defenseman and supposedly a jerk. Well, I, that See, that's gone away a little bit. Yeah. So well, I'll because it's it. just defensemen's stop and start. You know, that's yeah. not what they want. So. Right. Also, can we I, – I think we need to – you know, I understand there's personality characteristics that go into every player, but when you label a 16 year old as a jerk, or an 18 year old even, yeah, even that, yeah, yeah, like listen, I can understand. Rhea Sanderson and, and everything going on with them. So that's an interesting thing too, and I don't th we haven't have we fully tackled that. I don't no. think we've talked about so, it at all. So he's asked for a trade out, and apparently, Leah Sanderson, being the defensive prospect for the Rangers. He's asking forward. for a, he's a forward prospect. Jesus, he's sorry. The, he's the, <laughs> the Swedish world junior player who threw a silver medal into the yes. audience right. crowd. Which, you know, I don't know if that yeah. says anything about his character. I, I, I mean, I think don't it, do I, it. <clears throat> like, okay, I can... Steve. What? If I were to say, if I were to base my, my judgment of you on that time that you almost threw a punch at Derek's dad. Yeah. Or did throw a punch at Derek's dad. I would think you're a terrible guy. No, but I I look back <laughs> at that time and I go, what a chuckle fuck! Like, what, what, <laughs> like, I love that. What an idiot! Yes. And but I grew. Right. Right. Well, so well, I can I can look at someone's actions now and be like, man, you are not ready for the show. And but, but I also say you could mature. Yeah, and I don't think it would even take you that long. Right. To do it. It's not that hard. No. I think. Well, first off, the Ryan Merkley stuff's disappeared, which has been good. Yeah. Is it Ryan or Nick? Ryan. I know there's two Merkleys. It's Ryan Merkley on this one. Okay. Yeah, I believe San Jose. So, Anderson's sitting out right now. That's right. Because he was sent down to the Wolf Pack after a brief stint with the Rangers, and he wasn't happy about that. My heart <clears> stopped <throat> for a minute. I thought you were talking about Freddie. <laughs> You're oh, like, no, no, no. <laughs> Anderson's sitting out right now, and I... Pardon? <laughs> what? So... He's in Europe right now. Is, did he go back to Europe? Yeah. I thought I thought he was. I don't know. I just heard he's. I just read that he's sitting out because he wasn't happy with being sent down to Hartford after not playing well. Right, and then the there was the Dreger tweet that everyone was freaking out about because he he has not been diagnosed with uh, like depression or anything like that, which okay. isn't to say he doesn't have it. Did you see Wait, any? Sorry, of this? no, I didn't. Yeah, see Yeah, here, that let tweet me let me try I'm to bring look it up. it up. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, look, just look up Darren Dreger, Leah Anderson. Um, there was a interesting little hot topic for a few days. It's amazing what you can do when the Leafs don't play for a little bit. I had brunch today for the first time in months because the Leafs weren't playing and I didn't have to make a video. Okay, so this is just me filling time. So Darren <laughs> Dreger that. called Titan Sports three six five, which is, I believe, yeah, his his agency. agency. Yeah. He said, "I called Titan Sports three six five's Jarrett Bousquet." Uh, I hope I or Busquet. Uh, following up on Leah Anderson's situation, Busquet quali er, clarifies Anderson has not been diagnosed with mental health issues and doesn't suffer from anxiety or depression. He is, however, upset with his situation with the Rangers. Where where did that part come out? What do you mean? Where did it come? Well, out? where did so the part? It sounds like Dreger was calling to verify a story that somebody had said that Anderson oh, had right. Depression. I know what people I think had a problem with. What, he hasn't been diagnosed with anything. And up to that point in the tweet, I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. But then to say he concretely does not have something or is not going through anything or battling anything or is even bummed out at the moment um, was a bit pre presumptuous. Like yeah. to, to put it out there as a as fact, a lot of people I'm still, were pointing out was irresponsible. I'm really, I'm really confused as to why this was asked. Uh I think it's it's similar to who was the guy in the Sabres who just disappeared? Berglund. Yeah. Yeah. We were all like, when he what happened? For Where'd he go? Million dollars, yeah. yeah, where'd but he we go? In, for, in different did he, situations. Did we not but... wait for Berglund to come out with that story on his own? Yeah. Okay. I think we did. Well, I, th I think what we probably did at first was, man, how bad is Buffalo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that he doesn't even want to no, but I just... make millions of dollars to play there. I think the difference with mental health is I think that should come out 
should that not come out with the player's direction rather than a I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't envy a reporter's job. They, but Twitter is a really clunky way to address that. Okay, you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought know. it could have been it's done a, better. I don't, I'm not a journalist. I, it's hard for me to criticize that. But I, well, it's not hard for me to criticize that. I just it does, there's something it doesn't feel right about that. I don't know. Am it's I a right? Bit, yeah. No. There's a stank. Okay. There's a. There's right. a. Maybe I'm just being too sensitive. There's but, a. Did someone step in something? Yeah. Um. Beyond the, like with the Leah Anderson situation, do you not look at that and go, man, what a perfect trade. Pull your for Anderson. Pull your Merkley Pouille. for Anderson. Why are you trading Merkley? Why would the Sharks trade Merkley? He's great. I don't know. It's also Anderson's not moving the needle for the Sharks. The Sharks need so much more than that. Yeah, they need yeah. Merkley to stay. Yeah, he's True. their he's their up. No, I don't also oh what... oh, you're saying yeah. Pulley saying... Pulley can be a piece for the Rangers going forward. Yes, and Anderson yeah. can be a piece for the Oilers now. Y- yes, sure. That's interesting. Anderson still hasn't proven though that he's an NHL player. Right. No, but some would but even say Cap- than, some would even say Capocaco. But it's better than a guy who's not playing for you. Yeah, yeah Cap- Capocaco had a. S- He's put up some points, but uh, his uh, possession numbers are really not good. Yeah. 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 He's he's had a tough start to his career. Hey, doesn't mean he's over. Doesn't mean it's right. over. Doesn't but mean he's I did, over. I did end up with him in my fantasy, and that did not work out. It's yeah. Unfortunate. Wasn't that me going at him? You got to get Kako. Yeah, I think so. But Sorry. that's okay. Sorry, we Doc. all thought he was gonna be great. Yeah. Um, I, I think he's going to be. I think the point I'm. With with San Jose and with all of this is I I think San Jose's dreaming if they think that they can bring this team back to the Stanley Cup yeah. Finals because that's what you have to do with the contract situation the way it is forget the playoffs it's not about the playoffs now it's about winning a cup and right. if you are not gonna win the cup with this group and I don't think you are and I know that there's gonna be Sharks fans that are like what the hell what's wrong with you look at these players they're really great I don't think the the, the Sharks are gonna win the cup now watch them go all the way to the finals now that I've said it. I mean, this is when, historically, this is when the Stanley Cup uh, is, is champion turns it on. <laughs> historically, as of last year. Beginning of January, yeah. Um, the Blues really did screw it up for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. The Ducks, um, and I mentioned this earlier, the Ducks want to clean up your garbage. But it's going to cost you. What, they're sick of having Corbini and Holzer play second line right wing? Well, what they're saying is they've let it be known that they've got cash and cap space. They're willing to listen to you if you want to help clean up your cat problem. However, it will cost you good young assets. Well, sharks are a non-starter. You know, you don't want to help out your division rival. No, I wonder. I mean, I know Vancouver's on the west coast, but I wonder. But it's different. It is different, and I wonder if Louis Erickson's not a duck at some point soon. It's one of those things where like the Leafs are in the same division as Tampa, but like I'd make mm. a deal with them. It doesn't mean the same to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean? yeah, they're not in the same. The province. Panthers, right. or yeah. state. Okay, Bruins. Well, well no. <laughs> yeah. Habs. Well, okay, I don't need can. It's that bad. What are you? What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little. I wonder. I wonder. To me, I think the Canucks are going to call them. I don't think the Canucks need to call them yet, but I think the Canucks will need to call them at some point in the future. And it doesn't in have to future. be Erickson. It could be Beagle. It could be Sutter. It could be you know Russell. It could be anybody. But there are there are contracts on that team, and if you give them a better player, like Beagle's still a good player, Russell's still a good player. If you trade those guys to the Ducks, what you have to strap along with them won't be that much. But it will clear a lot of cap space, and I think for Vancouver, that's going to be really important this summer. I do. For them to move forward and for them to move up, they need to spend their money in different ways than the way they've spent it, and they've already spent themselves pretty much. To the ceiling. They've got $30,000 in cap space right now. The Canucks? Yeah. And this is a team. There's so many teams in cap space. What's their deadline cap space? Sorry? Sorry? What's their deadline cap space? Deadline cap space will be a million eight. Oh, gosh. So not a lot. No. And, like, I I look at a Roussel or Beagle contract, especially Jay Beagle, 34 years old now. And he's got two more years after this. Like, that's where you're like, man. Yeah, no, I, I I definitely feel you there. Okay, here's a team. Okay, the team with this idea that the Ducks have should always be the team in last place. Yes. This should be the Red Wings. What are the, What's the Red Wings cap situation like? Because aren't they really tight? 
Hold on, let me find out for you. Because I'm, be the I'm most, and by the way, if I'm the Red Wings, I would have been I would have been firing everybody to get uh, DeBoer or Hines. But no, we're going to extend Blashill. No, I'm. Uh, do they extend Blashill? No, they're going to. Though. They're talking. What? About it. That's what they're talking about. Are they tanking next year Can't, too? Uh, ask your boys from the Wing Wheel podcast. They are thrilled. Oh boy. Um, I don't now, know about Detroit that. is up against it. Their deadline cap space is going to be. Well, it's not bad. No, no, no. Actually, they're not bad at all. Um, today's cap it is eighty million, but the current cap space apparently that they have is ten. Deadline cap space can be ten million. Oh, okay. So they can Projected, take on a couple problems. Yeah, they can take on some problem contracts by the deadline. Ah, okay. Never mind. I was I was trying to come up with some harebrained scheme where they could free up some cap space and then maybe do the same thing as the Ducks. But how does that make any sense? You're just no. It doesn't yeah, make sense. I was trying to come up with it on the fly. If everything remains the same, their defensive expenditure from this year to next goes from nineteen to four million dollars. Wow. <laughs> So Green, Erickson, and Daly all come off the books after this year, along with Alex Ooh, Piega. You talk about a bad read. Remember at the time when Trevor Daly signed? We were like, whoa, no, no, no. The sun is setting there, my friend. Why Why are you signing with the Red Wings? Poor guy. Yeah, I felt that bad sucks. for him. Yeah. That, um, was a, that was a bad sign. I never looked at Trevor Daly as like a mover. You know, he was a as... great... NHL video game guy for yeah. forever. He was. Yeah. Why though? I know. <laughs> well, he was fast. Yes, yeah. he's fast. He was easy to put up points with. Um. Okay. And can I just say, it feels like again, Detroit has learned nothing. And I and I I say this, like I love Stevie Y. He's great. But why did you give Val Philpola six million dollars over two years on a thirty-five plus deal? Why? It's like the modern Tim Connolly deal. Yeah. Remember that. Oh. Four and a half over two. Someone brought that no, up no, the it was other an $8 day. Million was like, deal or nine million dollar deal over two years. You know how hard it is for me to forget a Leaf thing from recent years. I know it's painful, and I forgot Tim Connolly was a Leaf. Like, like Van- Detroit knows. Detroit knew going into this year that they were going to be bad. You could have found. Yeah, but you, you got can't ice tell me product. There was yeah, but you can't tell me there was a market for Val Philpola. I and think you can't tell me. You can make an argument to me. He scored 17 goals last year. He's a centerman. He's played in Detroit. Loves it there. I get it. But you can't tell me that the market for Val Philpola with his 31 points last year was so great that they had to give him two years. I think you bring in a guy like that. Listen, I don't love that signing either. But Sign I, him I for bet, $5 million and one. I bet the thinking was you're going to come in. We're going to give you a lot of money because we trust you and we think you're a good player and you're going to be a good, good influence. Mm-hmm. Um, Babcock and, isn't here anymore. And the team around, <laughs> yes, the Babcock's not here anymore. And the team around you, know this, Val, is going to suck. So we're bringing you in. They're paying. They're paying him to give away his his golden years to you, a bad team. You're gonna be a talented babysitter. Okay. Can and play, if there's an opportunity to trade you to a contender, we'll do it. There won't be. Can we play my new favorite game? Let's do it. Could the Leafs alumni roster playing at? Nathan Phillips Square today beat the current D- Detroit Red Wings. All right, let's go. Through. I want to hear it. Who do All we right, got? Steve Dangle. Do you want so, to... as they are today at their These current guys age, guys who are going out on the ice right now at their current age, could they oh boy, be, oh boy, could they beat the Detroit Red Wings? Okay. Doug Gilmore, Dave Reed, who I'm pretty sure is like I don't in know their scouting Reed department or something. <laughs> <clears throat> Greg Hotham. Don't know who that is either. Nope. Kevin McGuire. Nope. Rick Vive. Okay, I have seen Rick Vive and Al Iafredi and Wayne Primo play. Okay, Jesse, already going bad for this alumni roster. I have played with three of the names we've mentioned. <laughs> but are they still good? That doesn't make them bad. Right. <laughs> Makes Mike, you bad. <laughs> Mike Zigamanis is on the Sportsnet 590 The Fan morning show right now. Uh-huh. And is still in as good a shape as ever. He is actually. He's like, oh, jacked. you know, let me just do a morning show and I'm going to run a super just marathon. Just because you worked with some of these people doesn't mean they're bad at hockey. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Thomas Caberle, who I think is still a local. Lou Franceschetti, who once screamed at me at Road Hockey to concert, uh, Conquer Cancer. Why but, did he scream at you? Because I flamingoed to block a shot and then he slashed me and said, you block it like a man! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Wendell Clark, Rick Natris, Peter Ng. Uh, Tom Fergus, Dave McElwain, Dan Dau, Bob McGill, who I Big would Daddy. still not look in the <laughs> Big eye. Daddy. Big Daddy Bob McGill. Uh, Stumpy Thomas, Shane Corson, 
Dmitry Moronov and Nick Antropov, current uh, Marley skills coach. Was that Tucker's not out there? Oh, Darcy. That is a bummer. Tucker's not out there. I think he's in Bond today with Scotiabank. Oh, oh he's, he's doing yeah, hometown he's doing hockey a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think he's doing. Who, who's in net? This is very key. So they have. Um, I think it's a couple Ryerson goalies who get oh, to play net. Because I was about to say Peter Ng is listed as center, yeah. and I don't think so that's they have right. The goalies playing out. But uh, yeah, yeah, they have a bunch of Ryerson goalies. Well, there. Ryerson goal. Okay, so automatically advantage Leafs alumni. Okay. Well, no. Let's, <laughs> let's take the goalies out of it. Let's say both teams get NHL goalies. Who are you picking? And these guys at their age. At their age, could they knock off the Red Wings? Leafs alumni. I'm gonna take it because they play with heart and Thank grit. You. And okay, it depends what kind of officiating we're getting. If we're getting old school officiating, these yeah. guys will just. I don't know, hack the Red Wings until they no, have twice by, the amount of we're bones. We're playing by 80s rules. 80s rules? Yeah, there's no trapezoid. Um, Le- Leafs the, alumni. The, yeah, the Leafs <laughs> alumni. The, the Red Wings will be dead by the end of the year. No, Nick, I think, Nick Antropov's going to snipe from no, the blue line? I don't think I don't think that the Red Wings are going to lose to the alumni Leafs. I do think <laughs> if you put them up against the Marlies, Ooh. the Marlies will win. No! Yep. Oh. Yeah, I do. No! Yeah. Is that so crazy? Wow. Okay, who is a better goalie? Just in general, Jonathan Bernier mm-hmm. or Casimir Kaskiswo? Bernier. Bernier, yeah. Okay, so advantage there. Okay. Do the Marlies have a player as good as Robbie Fabry? <laughs> Do the Marlies have a player as good as Tyler Bertuzzi? Um, or Anthony Mantha? Tyler Bertuzzi's a damn all star, Adam. Somebody had to be an all star. I mean, he's a bit of a Leo Komarov all star. Yeah, so. But he's a damn all star. Dylan Larkin. Yeah, Dylan Larkin's a good player. Listen, no, I I think I think you look at um, you look at the Marlies up front. I think they're going to score. They're going to outscore them. Put it this way: if the Marlies and Red Wings played a playoff <laughs> series, the Red Wings would not sweep them. Yes, but you exactly. think the Marlies win that series? I think that's they'd have ridiculous. a pretty good shot at it. Wow, yeah. that's so disrespectful. I don't think Red Wings fans would even disagree. They'd be like, "Yeah, probably." I but, think. Do we get a better pick if they do? <laughs> <laughs> Please just give us a <laughs> Lafreniere. Yeah. I think they would disagree. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Lafreniere is going to the Habs, by the way. Does yeah. everyone know that? Yeah, we everyone know knows that. that. He's going to be a Hab. Um, did you see that he missed? I think it was 14 games because he was at the World Juniors, and then he came back and he still leads the league in uh, points. That's so stupid. <laughs> It'd be, it's stupid that he even leads his team. He yeah. leads the league. Yeah. What's he at? Uh, What's his? Yeah, uh, I have it up. You got to see this. The, it's when was um, the last time we had a number one pick out of Quebec? It's too bad. It's a tough league. It's too to bad gauge. Detroit won't get Lafreniere because Lafreniere is, is Zadina in a, just as a line pairing. Oh, like, yeah, that'd be think ridiculous. about that. Oh my God. And Valino, you know, you know, I don't think he's played in the NHL are saying yet. It, he's going to Montreal because he's French. Ottawa is 50 50, man. They're, they're fully bilingual up there. I wonder, Lafreniere, Lafreniere, Kachuk, Byfield. On account of the sharks still suck. With what Brandis if they pick one two? With Brandstrom up uh, as your as your uh, right shot. You know dude. how mad I'm gonna be if the Leafs are finally this good and friggin' Ottawa gets the first and second pick. Go away, <laughs> go away. This friggin' division. <laughs> Damn it. He's sitting at 73 points in 33 games. <laughs> the, uh, for Ramuski. He has 40 more points the way, than the games the played. Always ends up with <laughs> the the oceanic always ends up with these like it's unfair. Um, like generational. The <laughs> the Quebecois Knights mm. are they the Ramouski Knights? They should be. Yeah, they might as they well. They should be. <laughs> they're, they're owned by the Hunters. It's okay. The, here's the Memorial Cup: the Ramouski mm. Knights, the London Knights, mm. the Vancouver Rough Riders, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's that's staggering. Yeah, there were some big deals in the OHL. I think uh, I got to go see the Peterborough Peets. Did you get off the phone with Akil Thomas? I did. I, yeah, so I just got <laughs> off the phone with Akil Thomas. He said, "Thanks for having me on ice surfing," and I said, "It was great. Everyone watched it." Scarborough. Yeah, Scarborough. Um, no, so the Peets who already had Liam Kirk, uh, SDA, and uh, Nick Robertson mm-hmm. went out and got Akil Thomas. Does that mean the Leafs are drafting him? Yeah. And uh, also Jack York, who is Jason York's son. Wow. So now i got to go see him. My ice surfing line mate. They acquired so much ice surfing. They acquired the son of ice surfing co-host Jason York and ice surfing guest Akil Thomas. And you both knew that what because you, you watch think, all the time. What did you think of Wes McCauley's birthday posts? I did not see it. 
Oh, from the NHL. Okay. I saw it. Everyone tagged me in it. I would. I did not watch it. <laughs> Do you hate anyone more in the world than Wes McCauley? He's the, the the most overrated personality in the sport. Person on earth? Maybe. Whoa. I know. Hot take. Steve. Who's more banned from the show? Yep. Wes McCauley or Gary Bedman? Wes McCauley's not banned from the show. You would have Wes McCauley on? No, he seems like a funny guy. And so in this environment where it'd be cool to you know be joking around making yuck yucks, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think he'd be great. Would you tell him to his face that he's the most overrated personality in hockey? Yes. And because he's in hockey culture, you'd be like, yeah, there are better ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's Where a ref. You say that to somebody in the NFL, they'd be like, what? Fuck no, you. Fuck you. He's you an NHL that? ref. The, the amount of shit the players say to him and the, the <laughs> retorts he has to have, I'm confident that if I talk shit to Wes McCauley's face, he would snatch the soul out of my chest. Did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He would. It would be a bad day for me. Yeah. Uh-huh. However, oh, did you see this? Wasn't it so funny? See, you're... <laughs> I don't I don't care. Here's you know what it is, Jesse? Uh-huh. It's not about Wes McCauley. <laughs> it's about the state of the NHL. Okay. It, it, Steve's <laughs> Steve's gripe is not with Wes McCauley. Okay. It's with the fact that it takes Wes McCauley for the to sports to have any personality. That okay. might be it. Yeah, you don't you don't have any you have no issue with Wes McCauley. Probably not. None. It, it's Adam, the fact Adam, that Wes McCauley I, I, is not I divert to my psychologist Adam Wilde. Yeah. You you don't you you have no issue with hmm. Wes McCauley. You have an issue with the fact that a ref gets a lot more play than some of the superstars in the sport. That's probably it. It's right. it's Wes McCauley going fighting or a sardine. They both get they both get the same reaction. Or, or, or. What about gritty? Don't care. What? Gritty. What about Gritty? Gritty's funny. He's Gritty's got a green amazing. belly button. Right. And a jolly gut. They do a really good job with Gritty too. Like oh, yeah. honestly, they do a they're it's very, very well done. The yeah. Flyers yeah. flyered. Gritty into working. Yes. Everyone right away was like, this is terrifying and stupid. What are you doing? And the Flyers just went, more Gritty! And right. they just they just went all eggs into the Gritty basket, and somehow it worked. What, but what if Wes McCauley, mm. Wes McCauley'd himself into working? Like, he just doubled down on his nonsense. Oh, I think he has. Bench. What, and he was just freaking Leslie Nielsen just fighting! And, like, he punches himself, knocks himself out, gets carried off on a stretcher, comes back and does a pirouette at center ice, Why and then not? the game continues... Ten minutes later, imagine how many gifts there would be from the NHL gifts account. Oh, oh my so god. many Wes McCauley gifts. Oh my god! I Wes just... McCauley hands up emoji. Just the lamest thing in the sport. It's so, <laughs> it's so bad. I think Steve Dangle versus Wes McCauley is the <laughs> battle I'm looking forward to in 2020. Oh. Isn't it funny the first time? <laughs> how many years is TSN going to run that you can't do that soundbite? I think that's like five that years old. That was funny. That that five is five years funny. ago. Yeah, that is funny. Five years ago. Also, it was exhibition. He called a penalty in an exhibition game the way it should be called. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> Listen, that, that was funny. That, I'm not saying he's never done anything that, uh, you know, made me laugh. Wes McCauley has made me laugh, hmm. but I think yeah, you might have nailed it. Is that like okay? We're talking about okay, Wes McCauley's. Entertainment value mm-hmm. is third line at best. Yes, and we're talking about this guy like he's McDavid. And yeah, mm. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm saying. There it is. Yeah. I found yeah. it. Okay, now I like him. There you go. It's not West. I like McCauley. third you, liners. You I like Engvall. I like yeah. Kapanen. But everybody's paying him and treating him like he's first line. Yeah. 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 Whoa, man! I'm not mm-hmm. giving him twelve and a half mil. Didn't you like? What Tyler, are we doing here? Didn't you like Tyler Bozak a lot more when Austin Matthews and Niles and Kadri went one and two on the lease? Sure did. Oh, I like yeah. Cece a lot more on the third pair. Right. There it is. We found it. Yep. He's getting too much play. Um, I don't know if you guys saw uh, any of the NFL yesterday. I know Steve didn't, but uh, Richard Sherman had. Are the Titans of, in something? The Titans won. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they beat. That's my team. They beat Minnesota. Oh, great. But, oh, those um, damn. It's the Vikings, right? That's right. Stupid they Vikings. Did, they beat uh, Baltimore. Oh, Ravens. Sorry. It was one of the purple Ravens. ones. Ravens, Ravens. It was, ah. it was San Fran that beat uh, Minnesota. But it was funny because Richard Sherman, who's always a good talker, he is one of these guys that even if somebody, <clears throat> nobody, even if everybody's complimenting him, he still believes that there's somebody out there. It, don't you ever talk about me. Yeah. Who, who's talking about you? Uh, Crabtree. <laughs> Crabtree. <laughs> that was um, hilarious. So it was so funny because in the game yesterday, he had Kirk uh, Cousins threw the ball literally right to him and it was an interception, right? Like it was like R- Richard Sherman read it perfectly, got it and whatever. And when you hear the call 
the the announcer's like, wow, that is why Richard Sherman is so great. Richard, you cannot fool Richard Sherman is what, what the quote was. And okay. that is like the ultimate, like you can't say anything better about a defensive back than that. You cannot fool this guy. There's a lot of teams that just won't even shoot, they won't, won't even throw the ball to him. Um, and so Richard Sherman gets off the field and he's like, I'm tired of everybody saying, <clears throat> Oh, it's it's the quarterback must have had a bad game, or the wide receiver must have had a bad game, or slipped, or he's, something. He's one of those guys. And it's like, and he's like, if you look at every defensive uh, thing since I got into the league, I show up in the playoffs. I'm number one in every category. Blah 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 blah. And I'm like, Richard, no, everybody thinks you're great. Nobody, nobody yeah, thinks you're bad. He needs that. He needs it. Yeah, he does. Yeah. But one thing he did do this off season, which is now he's dunking on everyone, is he negotiated his own deal like Drew Doughty did, and. It was all bonus laden. And this guy's in his 30s now, right? So in the NFL, he should be basically out of the sport. He got two million bucks uh, on, you know, like as a base salary and then like a bunch of other bonuses or whatever. And I guess he hit them all. And so he went back through Twitter and looked up all the Richard Sherman takes. This is why this is why education is important. Richard Sherman should have hired an agent. And then said, oh, it's looking pretty good now. Like, and he retweeted like 10 different guys who were like, this is a bad idea. So why do we give Kevin Durant shit, not Richard Sherman? Because Kevin Durant goes on his secrets accounts and argues with people. About Kevin and, Durant. Yeah, about Kevin Durant. Or openly does it on his own stuff. With but, uh, Kendrick Perkins. With Kendrick I saw. Perkins, yeah. yeah. But Richard Sherman mm-hmm. is just like, hey, I did great. Look at me, I'm great. Oh, yeah. okay. He it's just totally does it to different. rub it in your face. Yeah. Right, He's right. not, okay. And Richard Sherman also was like, I'm, I got something to prove. Kevin Durant's right. not about something to prove. Kevin Durant gets his feelings hurt. Right. That's that's what's happening. Yeah, the fragility of, <laughs> and it's about it's not that he gets his feelings hurt; it's why why he gets his feelings hurt. Yeah. Mm. Nobody denies that Kevin Durant is great. Mm. It's the fragility of Kevin Durant's ego that is so annoying, mm-hmm. and it across... takes away from what is just a, a beautiful basketball player. Right. right. He's MVP, amazing. former MVP. Oh yeah, he's amazing. It, uh, you see it across all sports, and it's in UFC too, where like, you gotta believe. You're the baddest, and everyone's against you. But then you run into a guy like Khabib, who j- he does not need that. He's like, no, I am the best, and I will run you over. And he's proven. And that. then I will run the next person over. That's how it works. When is the McGregor fight? Isn't he back? Uh, I'll watch it. It'll be entertaining. But like to me, like you can't beat Donald Cerrone and then be like, I need a shot at the title. Why not? McGregor is a part-time fighter. He doesn't get to. He doesn't get a title shot, and if what he if, does, it it waters down the belt. Mm, Except he, it won't because he's not going to win it because Khabib's going to kill him again. What if he wins? He won't. He won't. So we got a <clears> bet <throat> on our hands. He. Mm. I will bet on Conor McGregor <laughs> losing that fight. All right. Definitely. If it ever happens. Apparently, he looks really good yeah. in training. Everyone looks really good in training. Carmelo looks really looks good in training, training too. And now he's you're not at the top level. Drink. What? Uh, Carmelo Anthony was looking good in the gym. We were all laughing at him. Now he's going back and scoring 15 points a game for the Blazers. Just saying. Maybe he is. Maybe maybe Conor McGregor has got his... Listen, I'm I'm a doubter too. He doesn't train with Khabib. That's the, you can train wrestling all you want, and then you get in the ring with Khabib, and you're like, oh shit, I wasn't training against someone good enough. That's when because the best guy is Khabib. Sorry. When is the Cerrone fight? It's really soon, isn't it? Like a couple weeks? Uh... January eighteenth. That's this this Saturday. Oh damn! Price. Okay. So on Sunday, looks like we're gonna have a little UFC talk. By uh, Steve Dangle's gonna do his UFC segment. He's gonna put it'll, on his. It'll be just as 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 <laughs> oh. groundbreaking as his Joker segment. You know, fights today are different. You created the Joker segment. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about the Joker. It was good, Steve Dangle. It was good. I liked it. I liked it. That's it. You know what we could do is try a little bit of that friendship (laughs) and hang out and watch the fight. Maybe go for a little skate, a couple laps beforehand. Are you iron your tap out shirt? I do not have a tap out shirt. You you retract that right now. No, I wear it on Sunday. I do not have. I I don't think I have any. I found out my friend uh, on Friday. I found out my friend has a tap out water bottle. Oh "Oh, Oh. no! Why does he fight? No, <laughs> no, but he wants to let everyone at the gym know that he does or might. Yeah, might, yeah. I don't. Ooh. I don't even think he understood the reference, but uh, nope. yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> he doesn't. He didn't even know that tap out was like he's not into fighting. Like he's no. anyway. I still had to make fun of him for that's it. A tough, <laughs> that's a tough one. Yeah, no, you have to. You 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 have to make some make fun of someone if they've got yeah. tap out on. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. Unless, Unless they're one of those big guys with tap out on. Right. I'm like, 
okay. Well, you're... You look like you might actually make me do it. So, <laughs> no, never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Only make fun of people your own size. <laughs> yes. Or, or lesser than. Yeah. Also, beware the small bouncer. You ever been to a place with a small um, bouncer? Yes. Yeah. That There is a reason why... Stay the shit away from them. ...and shorter girls can get bigger muscles. Shorter levers, and they have way more power than you do, and no, don't No, but if you it. see, like, like my buddy... Uh, uh, it was a bar in Toronto. The bouncer couldn't have been more than like a buck sixty-five, five foot seven. And I'm like, no, I, trust me, that guy could kill you in less yes. than five seconds. Yes, he could, absolutely. And then we again, drunkenly they... asked him, we're like, yo, you know crazy <clears throat> stuff, right? This was years ago, and he's like, oh yeah, like military, and just starts naming off every question, martial art in the I book. Question about that stuff. I know it takes a certain kind of person to get into that, but like, what kind of person? Because I don't know a lot of, like, I know people in the military, but they're like, you know, there's people in the military that, that train like they're in the military, and then there's people in the military that are soft, that are like, yeah, well, I I used to be in shape, but yeah, I'm at a desktop are now. Yeah, oh yeah, 100%. My friend in, in the army right now, he's like, well, there's those guys that, he's like, you can tell the guys that have come out of basic training, and the guys have been in there for 20 years. I, well, you know? I, think, I think it's a demeanor thing, because we, we've known people who... They definitely, they know their shit. Oh, yeah. And chivalrous and obviously highly trained, highly educated. And we know guys who are there because they're friggin' jarhead. Yeah. Yeah. They're, and they're, I don't even want to talk about it. There was one guy we grew up with where I'm like, you're giving him a gun? <laughs> All right. <laughs> At least he's on our team. I, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I think it's no. I just think it's um, no. I, and then he went I, I to training wonder, and came back and was more that guy. Yeah. And I'm like, I just oh wonder, no, I don't like that. What kind of guy does it take to train like that? Like, look at like what what um, Tiger Woods used to do, right? That Navy SEAL shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was in amazing shape. And like Tiger Woods didn't need to do that. No. And he would have still been the best golf golfer in the world. I have. I love. Like even the David Goggins stuff. Like we laughed, but that's the kind of mindset it takes. Right. And I wonder, you know, because I, I never grew up with anybody that had, I was never close to anybody that had that mindset. Mm. So it's hard for me to understand it. Uh, but I, I find it fascinating because it's just someone who is addicted to the absolute extremes of where your human body can take you. And I think that's fascinating. It's the, the a different version of that is I just, there's a Kevin Hart uh, docuseries on Netflix. Hey, don't, don't screw this up or don't, don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this up. And I'm watching it just going, I would never want this. Like the, oh, and he can sleep two or three hours a night. And I'm like, no, that's a nightmare. And like being away from your family all the time. What, what are you? Well, that's just him, though. It doesn't mean that every every celebrity's like that either. No, I know. But I, f- I feel like, and it's sort of going away. But the, the hustle culture of you need to be pushing yourself to the fucking brink. Like, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. How do we get here? <laughs> I was just talking. Just talking about Khabib and shit. Yeah. No, I, I think... Um... Oh, yeah, I you think, were talking about Richard Sherman, and I brought it to yeah, the UFC well, for no, no good that reason. No, rise and grind shit is, it works for some people. Yeah. It doesn't work for others. It's not, there's no one universal thing. And I think you can be, like, Winston Churchill, for instance, very successful person, I think we can imagine, you know, wasn't successful, and then all of a sudden, you know, was. Yes. Uh, Winston Churchill, up until his mid-60s, was noted as a failure. Uh, but this guy, this here's a guy that like I always love when they when like Forbes posts those dumb clickbait articles like here are the highly successful habits of mm-hmm. these people. Well, they're all different. And like for instance, Winston Churchill would not wake up until like six. He'd wake up at six o'clock in the morning. He'd work till noon. He'd sleep for three hours, and then he'd work till midnight, and then he'd sleep again. And that was the sleep schedule that worked for him. Yeah, there were other him pe- specifically. Him specifically. The key in life is to find what works for you. Yes. Right. It's not about. Like there's a there's a uh, a guy online who's famous for like jacking you up, and if you listen to him, he's got one of those like things where he's like, man, I want to go out and and just succeed at everything. All that stuff scares yeah. the shit out of me. Eric, his name's Eric Thomas, and he's actually he, he means well and that sort of thing, and he goes to communities that are, um, that are really in a, in a tough way, especially around the states, and he goes, you gotta uplift yourself, and here's how, and he's like really brilliant. Okay, but he's like. One of his things, he's like, on Monday, I grind. On Tuesday, I grind. And he does that, and he's like, even on Sunday, I wake up and I grind. And it's like, well, no, eventually you're going to burn yourself out. But if that works for you, great. But at some point, you've got to find just what works for you, and it can't be that. 
Except if you're like a David Goggins, like, I don't care. I'm not putting on sunscreen. That is for soft I don't people. care that my lungs temporarily stopped working. Yeah. I'm gonna continue or that I had a heart attack mid-race. and went, Like, that's what happened to him. Look Guys, at you. Nuts. You're in wicked shape and you had a heart attack. Don't you? You're not seeing but the trend here? But that's, again, that that's why I'm so fascinated with that mindset. It is so different from my own that I think it would be just fascinating to get a, get a look into. Sure. I would never be friends with it. No? no. I think you could be friends with that. I think, as long, I think it's as long exhausting. as they don't force you on it, right? I think you could be friends with anybody as long they, as they don't force their Can they not? Views. Huh? Can they not force that on you? You mean like... like I, I don't know if they're capable of that. I don't know. Like, Everyone well, around me has got to be... Well, Tiger Woods... has got to be about Woods. it. You never heard Tiger Woods really talk about his training regimen? No, and then he freaking like a, you know, cheated on his wife 500 times. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. But I, There's I, something going on I, there, maybe right? Maybe apples like, and orange, orange is there a little bit. But... No, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he cheats like he works out all the damn time. I think I'm going to have this last 10 minute here. Tiger Woods gonna... is not a soft motherfucker, you catch me? <laughs> Adam's talking about peepees. Yeah, that's right. I got it. Anyway, uh, let's do the press conference. And then we're done. Um, I think you can be friends with anyone, Steve. I think it's just a matter of whether or not they push their, their shit on you all the time. It would get annoying. Steve. David Goggins would have slapped that donut out of my hand. List people you can't be friends with. Gary Bettman. Wes McCauley. David Goggins. Tiger Woods. Um... Conor McGregor, for sure. Mm. I don't think that's too hot of a take. I talked to Khabib. Khabib would be interesting. Are you actually, is this an actual question or is this just Jesse asking? No, I think it's a legitimate question from Craig. Arthur Fleck. Mm -hmm. Cannot be friends with Arthur Fleck. Uh huh. Brendan Dillon. No, I don't know. I don't know the first thing about him. If Jesse to, Blake. If you had to give, um, if you had to grade the GMs for their midseason performance, who deserves an F and who <coughs> deserves an A plus? Wow, midseason? Midseason. I like this. Great question, Jesse. That is very is that good. for both of us? Oh, for both of you, yeah, yeah. Who deserves an F and who deserves an A plus? We don't care about those middle middle grades. No, because you the worst place to be is in the middle. All right. <clears throat> um I'm going to say. Okay. Say. I'm not, uh, I don't want to fully answer the question, but I'm just going to throw out there. Ottawa deserves an A+. Plus really? For doing what they're supposed to do. And that sucked bad. They are owning it. And acquiring assets. And acquiring yeah. assets, and they're doing both. They're going to do it again. I bet they get another first round pick at this trade deadline. They'll be awesome. And I think Peugeot. Duclair, Duclair is going to go. Man. I think Peugeot and Duclair yeah, could be why gone. Not? I at some point, you got to keep somebody. <clears throat> Peugeot's the guy you keep then. You don't keep Duclair. Oh. Maybe you're right. Yeah, honestly, so you've high. seen Peugeot. We've never seen Duclair do this before. We've seen Peugeot do this. No offense to Anthony Duclair, but we've never seen this from him before. Right. And he's a UFA at the end of the year. Sorry, but that's the guy I go. I, I keep Peugeot <sighs> if I can. Duclair, I already said this before, but Duclair's career has been so it's not fair. tumultuous. Yes, no, I know. If I was him, I'd want to I'd stay. talk to Ottawa about, listen, I want to get paid. I want to get my money, but how do we figure this out give that me, I can be here long term? Give me a couple years here, and then we'll talk. About, I, if I were him, I'd be like, give me a couple years here to prove that I can do this, and then you can get big, big, big money long term. Give me. I try to get term out of it. Would you? I would try to get term Three, out of it. Three, four million, and at sacrificing mm -hmm. money. What per do you year. think he's worth? Like on the open market, I don't even know. Like, is is Duclair? He's capable of getting at least ten million in a contract. Like over how many years? Like something like three point something over three. That yeah, I don't hate that. Yeah, so, like a Janssen ish so deal. So if he gets a three year nine million dollar extension from Ottawa, you don't hate that. No, no, not at all. I right. think that's a great deal for Ottawa and a good deal for him. Yeah, considering and if he what keeps it up, to. then he'll get a big fat contract at the end of it. Yeah. Um. Who who gets your A plus grades? Uh, I don't know if they've done the best job, but it just came to mind because they avoided. The mistakes that so many teams make, <clears throat> and they did make some changes, and they acquired nice little assets that they can use down the line without sacrificing too much from their roster. Tampa. Teams make so many awful mistakes mm -hmm. when they have a really disappointing playoff loss. Mm -hmm. 
And uh-huh. they could have fired John Cooper. They could have looked at their roster before the previous 10 games mm-hmm. and been like, we can blow it up. We're going to move this guy. We're going to move that guy. We're going to shake it up. And it turns out they're still just freaking Tampa. So they didn't really do anything. But that puts them ahead of so many different organizations. So many different yeah. organizations panic in that situation. So I'll say Tampa. Um, F? Oh, boy. Who's done a really shitty job? Did you give your answer yet? No. No. I can't. Do you want to? <laughs> my A... My A is going to go to Vegas. Oh, interesting. Uh, Vegas. Vegas, only because of this. Now, listen, they haven't had a stellar year. They got 54 points. They're 12th in the league, whatever. You can give me. Vegas just this year has left it alone. Don't play with it. You got that, a good That's thing. what I'm saying. Isn't it weird that the best teams, just leave like, it that's alone. what they have to do usually? And I, I like, listen, I still think Vegas should have done whatever they needed to do to get Eric Carlson two years ago. I think that would have been the difference of them winning the Cup or not. And whatever asset they refused to give Ottawa was a mistake not to give. However, since then, they've avoided signing Eric Carlson to a massive contract that mm-hmm. I think would eventually hurt them. And you look at the guys that they have. Like Mark Stone, who we don't hear about anymore because he's not on this coast. Right. But you've got you've got Marcia so at $5 million, Riley Smith at $5 million, William Carlson at 5'9". Stasny's got a couple, like a year left after this one, and then he's done. Pacioretty's signed for three more years after this one, and Stone is signed forever and ever on men, but he's one of the best players in the league. And I, I, and I love I love their defense. Listen to this. Nate Schmidt at 5'9'5", five, five, till 24'25". Shea Theodore at 5'2", till 24'25". And I got, you know, McNabb's at 2.5", 2, 2. and, you know, it kind of falls off from there. I don't love that they gave up Brandstrom. I'm a huge Brandstrom guy. I think he's awesome. But you got Stone. But you got Mark Stone. And I think with the goaltending that they have, Mark Andre Fleury's having another good year. If they can find a backup for him, I'm not I don't know. Is Malcolm Subban the guy? I don't know. Um, to back it up. Assuming Mark Andre Fleury's healthy and Cody Glass continues to continue to be what he is and that sort of thing, I think that there's a real this team's going to be really good for a long time. Mm-hmm. It's just a, it's insane. And then you look at going into this draft this year, they got a first rounder, two second rounders, and two third rounders. Next year, they got a first rounder, three second rounds. Woo! Like like th- it's insane. This team has done an is, amazing job of acquiring good young guys. Let me let is me one of those f- the Pittsburgh pick. One I think it's the next- Pittsburgh flurry pick. Yeah. That's unbelievable that they're still benefiting so, from that. Let me and let me run you through these age groups, right? 27, 31, 34, 27, 28, 29. Those are the top forwards. 28, 24, 28. Defense. Right. Those are the those are the age groups you want. And I think Vegas has just been lost. They've just been Vegas this year. They've been a good, solid hockey team. They haven't done much, and I don't think they need to do much. I think what they do is what they need to do is win a little bit more in a division that's been a bit topsy turvy. And I think they can do that. I think they get minimum second round this year. I'm struggling to hand out my F, but I think I have it. I can give you a brief moment. Give me an A, Jesse. A little more. Um, The Leafs activated forward Andreas Janssen from injured reserve. Hmm. While defenseman Jake Muzzin has been placed on IR. So uh, does that mean Janssen can play tonight? He can. It depends on how he does in the uh, warm-up. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. I did not know he was that close to coming back. There you go. Okay. Um, <coughs> all right. Guess? I'm changing my answer on the fly. Uh, I thought about uh, Don't the Sharks. Don't tell us who you thought about. Just go with the guy. All Where right. Who are you going? Uh, I'm going to go with the New Jersey Devils. Okay. They did so much shit in the offseason. Mm-hmm. We were talking about, look all at them. All of the shit. They're all of the shit. And they're going to be so much better. And we're talking about a team that was garbage last year, mm-hmm. changed everything, and was still garbage. Well, they didn't address their one issue. Goaltending. And they just called Corey Schneider up. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. Wee. Um, and so much of it comes back to goaltending, too, because the other two teams, I was going to say, Montreal has got to be in the conversation. They're getting, they're getting a lot out of their coach. They're uh-huh. getting a lot out of their players when they play. They're getting a big season from Shea Weber. Yeah. But we talked about the Penguins as an ideal organization because they were able to survive through the injuries. What does that make the Habs, then? Their depth sucks. Depth does suck. And I, I thought about the Sharks, but 
Martin Jones was actually pretty good up until last year. So the time to make a move there is now. Yep. Aaron Dell actually hasn't been as bad as I thought. 9-10, still not good enough, um, but not disastrous. The time to make a move is now. It wasn't necessarily last year. Right. Jesse, who do you give your A to? I give my A to Ottawa. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. And who's your F? Uh, my F goes to the Florida Panthers. Wow. For Good signing pick. Sergei Pabrowski. That sucks, eh? And looking no better than when you were when you had James Reimer. Yep. That's hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> and the were, Carolina Hurricanes looking good with James Reimer, so you shut your face. You had James Reimer and Roberto Luongo, and you paid 10.5 10. for Borowski. No, no, just 10 flat for a 31-year-old goalie, and you signed him through 2026. So I don't know how you're going to come out on the right side of that deal, but I don't think it's going to happen, and this year it looks like it's not going to happen. So now it's having a playoff spot with all this money and zero cap room. You went for it this year, and it doesn't look like it's working out right now. So I was so just I looking. Give you anything above an F. Panthers win tonight. They're one point behind the Leafs. Columbus is tied for the second wild card. How? Mm-hmm. Well, and so how? So that's why we'll get to our honorable mentions in a second. Yeah. But let me your, give you my F. Who's your F, Adam? Chicago. Mm. Yeah, what I thought the, about them too. What have the Blackhawks yeah. done this year? What have the Blackhawks done last year? What have the Blackhawks done the year before? What have the Blackhawks done that have, has been positive for their organization since they lost and didn't and scored like three goals against Nashville the year that Nashville went to the finals? Mm-hmm. What have the Blackhawks done? They fired their head coach. That's it. They what got, have they done? They got good goaltending. They still have two super duper stars. They got some really good young pieces. Still suck. What's going on? Yeah. What's going on, man? Their depth is it's just not there. The Blackhawks. And their D. And the thing is, yeah. I mean, that's, that's honestly, when you've got stars, and Dub has pointed this out, actually, in the, in the offseason. He said, you know, we've got our stars, right? we got our big guys. Chicago's got their big guys. Now, one of them is, like, Seabrook's never going to play again, I don't think. I don't think so. Uh, Duncan Keith is not Duncan Keith anymore. No. But that's why his contract's nice, because, you know, $5 million to Duncan Keith, eh, it's not bad. It's illegal. It's also illegal, but who cares? It's not. It wasn't illegal when it was signed. Right. Yeah. The point here is that Chicago has done next to nothing to shore up issues that have been issues for a long time. Stan Bowman needs to be held to account for that. And I'm not saying Stan Bowman is a bad general manager, but because Stan Bowman's won Stanley Cups, but what is he doing? What's he done recently? Randy what have Carlisle you done for me lately, Stan Bowman? Yeah, no, that's that's the thing. Yeah, you can be a GM that led your team to success, mm-hmm. and right now he is leading them in the opposite direction of that. Yeah, and you're wasting prime years of Kane and Taze, who are now both 31. Well, and they and they got the band back together with Saad. And uh, man, not every not every band should do a farewell tour. No. Sometimes you're too old and it's sad. Hmm. Like, and, and your second highest paid defenseman's Ole Mata. I forgot they even had him. Right? And then Connor Murphy after that. You, you shipped <coughs> Shalmerson out for no reason. You shipped Panarin out for no reason. How much better are, they, are the Hawks this year if they bite the bullet? How much better are they the last two years with Panarin? And how much better are they last year with Shalmerson? All they had to do was hang on to them. I know that their contracts were expiring. You traded Panarin with two years left. To get and, sawed. And that was the thing. It wasn't because they traded Panarin because they didn't think they could sign him. That's a bullshit excuse, and we know that. They traded Panarin they the because they wanted, sod, they wanted sod because Kane and Taze wanted that. And the second the players start calling the shots, it's wrong. And to they bring, got Andrew Shaw back. Why? What are, guys, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? And then, you know, and I, I get Play the Rob- a different song. Play a different. I got the Robin Lander signing. I thought that was hey hey when, why not? It was it was smart in that Corey Crawford is wicked, but they didn't know where he was health wise. Right, he had a bad hip and stuff, and that's tough. Yeah, and I mean and, it's it's okay to have too many good players at a certain position because then you can trade them. And you've bridged DeBrincat, who is your real up and coming star. He's going to make six point four for the next three years, and then when Kane and Taze are up in three years, DeBrincat will get paid. All that money. Jewish. Well, I don't think he's going to make $20 million a year. No, yeah, when third liner's making 10 Here you go. It's a 
I don't know where the to me the most damning thing a team can be is what are you? What are the Chicago Blackhawks? They're guys? a big pile of can what you the name hell anything? Are you? Can you name any characteristic, anything tangible? That's what I have to say. I'm so mad that they kicked the Leafs' ass under Babcock. Oh, yeah. That was dumb. That was such a okay, stupid game. Honorable mentions. Yeah, can we wrap? Because we're at 2.30. Oh, are we? Yeah. Jesus. How? That was a fun show. All right. Yeah. Good shit. Hey, give us your honorable mentions in the Twitter mentions. Twitter.com. Tell us what you thought of the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness. Connection complete.